evening. Sorry, a little technical difficulties, but we're all up and working. So good evening and welcome to the Township Committee meeting of July 26, 2022. Ms. Bork, please call the roll. Committee Member Brennan. Here. Committee Member Delcor. Here. Committee Member Thompson. Deputy Mayor Erickson. Here. Randall Here. Administrator Pereira. Here. That's Bernie Miller. Here. Please join me in salute to the flag. They moved it. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be advised in accordance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231 of Public Laws of 1975, that notice of this meeting was made by the posting on the Municipal Bulletin Board at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex and notifying the officially designated newspapers that this meeting would take place at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex at 7.30 p.m. on July 26, 2022. The first order of business is approval of minutes of executive session minutes dated May 24th, 2022 may have a motion to approve the executive session minutes of may 24 2022 so moved thank you we have a second second thank you any comments from the dais oh. any comments from the floor seeing none roll call please yes mayor Delfort. yes Deputy mayor erickson yes mayor yes we have our regular meeting minutes of july 12 2022 may have a motion to approve regular meeting minutes of july 12 2022 so moved. Thank you. We have a second. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Any comments from the floor? Roll call, please. Mayor Gritting? Yes. Mayor Madalcor? Upstate. Deputy Mayor Erickson? Yes. Mayor Lafonte? Yes. And I move on to reports from Committee Liaisons. Uh, we'll start with Committee Member Britting. All right. Thank you, Mayor. So we're going to start with social services today. Uh, so the Community Assistance Network, CAN, is holding a back-to-school supply drive. Among the items that are needed are backpacks, lunch boxes, flash drives, three-ring binders, crayons, notebooks, pencils, and pens, and other school-related items. Donations can be dropped off at the Social Services Department between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Please see the flyer in tomorrow's e-news and on the website for more information. That was Social Services. Now we'll move over to Health. So be on the lookout for back-to-school COVID-19 vaccination clinic for ages 5 and up on Thursday, August 18th from 4 to 6 p.m. and in here, the municipal building, and well water testing with Raritan Valley uh, headwaters in October. Also, the health department has a free uh, radon test kit available for all of those who need it. Uh, from a recreation standpoint, there's a lot going in recreation this year, but we're going to focus this time on the annual fishing derby. So it is that time of year for the annual fishing derby and camp out. The pond is stocked with plenty of fish, so come join us for some fishing fun. Uh, prizes will be awarded to the young people who catch the biggest fish. That's pretty cool. The derby starts at 5 p.m. Don't forget your tent and your family so you can spend the night under the stars at the camp out. Activities will include games and a movie in the park. Uh, we'll be serving up hamburgers, hot dogs, snacks, um, plus a light breakfast in the morning. This all takes place on Friday, August, uh, August 5th at Ann Van Middlesworth Park. For more information on registering for both the Family Campout and the Fishing Derby, please see the Recreation Department uh, webpage at hillsboroughnjrecreation.org. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mayor uh, Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of quick things. Um, I think we talked last time. We uh, have one of our uh, really fun events in town coming up. Uh, it's our fifth annual Restaurant Week. That's going to be taking place from September the 27th through October the 3rd. Uh, it's a, basically a free marketing program for our uh, restaurants to show off the very best that they can offer. Uh, our restaurants are encouraged to participate uh, and uh, regardless of the type of cuisine that they serve, it's a great opportunity for them to show all the residents here what they what they do and, and uh, some of their best dishes. Uh, for those restaurants that would like to sign up, uh, you can go to hillsboroughbusiness.org uh, for more information and to register, but it is a, a really good event. Uh, I know we can we get all the uh, committee people out, and uh, the residents have actually uh, done a really uh, wonderful job of getting out to the restaurants during that week and and uh, making sure that their efforts are uh, are rewarded. So uh, looking forward to that again. Again, that'll be the 27th of September through October 3rd, uh, and more information available at hillsboroughbusiness.org. And uh, also from the finance group, 
uh, residents should have received their third quarter tax bill in the mail last week. Uh, while it is based on an estimated tax rate, uh, this is the amount that will be due on August 1st. If you did not receive a tax bill, uh, you should contact our finance office. That's 908-369-8672, or you can stop in at the window here in the municipal building, and, um, and uh, they'll get you a copy of that bill. That's all for me, Mayor. Thank you. Debbie Merrick. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so to begin with, from our engineering department, um, they would like you to know that when a roadway has a pothole or a sidewalk is uneven, the township will temporarily repair the condition as soon as possible. However, with 530 lane miles of roadways and 150 miles of sidewalk to maintain, Public Works is doing all they can to assist every resident with their roadway and sidewalk repairs. All road and sidewalk conditions need to be brought to the attention of Public Works. If a roadway is not scheduled for full repaving, repairs can be completed by Public Works until a, a road is fully funded for repaving. The engineering department does not schedule maintenance repairs. The township committee contracted with an independent consultant to electronically review and rank all 100 or 530 lane miles of roadways within the township. The list of the roads to be repaved will be released after the yearly capital budget is approved by the township committee. If repaving is approved, the engineering department will then administer the bidding process and inspection of the repaving. The building department often gets asked, do I need a permit? If your pool is capable of holding more than 24 inches of water, the answer is yes. Pools have specific requirements for their installation and for their barrier. These requirements are intended to provide protection against potential drowning and near drowning by restricted access to the pool. Seasonal pools may be temporary, but can pose a life safety issue if the barrier requirements are not properly met. Please stop by the building department for more information and to get our residential swimming pool guide. From the Public Works Department, they would like you to know that they are winding down their annual road striping program, which assures that the municipal roads are meeting federal highway administration standards for traffic sign usage and road surface markings. DPW is working with the Police Department's Traffic Safety Bureau on keeping the roads safe for travel while recognizing any future improvements. As you can see from the photos, DPW recently participated in the Recre Recreation Department's Summer Camp Touch a Truck program. Campers received replica hard hats and had fun seeing the giant snow, snow plow trucks. Please visit the Public Works link on the Township website to learn more about our programs, including upcoming clean community events. The police department would like to remind township residents to not leave their pets unattended, especially during days in, in I'm sorry, pets in cars unattended, especially during days with extreme heat. If you come across a pet that is stuck in a hot car, please call the police if you can't immediately summon the owner. And that is it for me. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Just a few coming events here. Um, the New Jersey Motor Vehicle Commission's mobile unit uh, will be uh, tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, to fill a variety of MVV, MVC tasks in fast and efficient manner. Registration is required, however, for this service. For instructions, please email the office of Senator Andrew Zwicker at senzwicker at njleg.org. Attention, Pam Hirsch. Individuals with no access to email can also call 732-823-1684. Tomorrow, as I said, tomorrow uh, at 530 at 530 Willow Road, which is our park on Willow Road. It'll be on July 27th, and the second one will be October 6th, 2022. So there'll be a mobile uh, DMV, which will do a variety of tests. Uh, please see the email uh, or email Senator Zicker to get an appointment. Uh, Somerset County Clerk Mobile Office, Saturday, August 6th, here at the Missile Building, see the e-news for services available. Uh, on Purple Heart Ceremony on Saturday, August 7th, at our Purple Heart Ceremony, we'll be here at our Garden of Honor. This ceremony will begin at 9 a.m., and light refreshments will be served. Thank you to all our veterans, and especially those who uh, are Purple Heart recipients. And then also, as a reminder, coming up in August, it's around the corner, is the annual Rotary Fair from August 16th through the 20th. I hope to see you there. I'll be the guy in the parking lot, parking cars, so please 
be nice to me. Uh, flags for Heroes, also from Rotary. You can order your Flags for Heroes. If you remember last year on Veterans Day, we had about 100 flags that were out in front of this building in honor of those who uh, served, that you can buy a flag in their honor. Uh, so you can see the Rotary website for details on how to sponsor a flag. And then, as always, you can stay connected with, with events and more via the Wednesday e-newsletter. Be sure to follow like the official Hillsborough Township Facebook page and Twitter, TV29, and the Hillsborough YouTube channel, and the Hillsborough Alerts for traffic and emergency notifications. We have a few presentations and, and uh, proclamations today, so I'm going to go down and we'll, and we'll start. So this first one, I had the pleasure of meeting this young lady several months ago at a Rotary event. So Sophia, can you please come up front? Sophia Mortanzin, a third grader, is fighting back against the Russian invasion of the Ukraine in her own way. Sophia Mortanzin created a handprint painting in Ukrainian colors for sale, utilizing the proceeds to purchase medical supplies, clothing, bulletproof vests, helmets, and even a couple of drones. In three months, Sophia raised $14,000 and worked with the Ukrainian organization to get the materials to Ukraine and deliver to the front line. Sophia had the opportunity to visit Ukraine on her extended family to live, live uh, three years ago and wants to help the army to protect her family and all the children still in Ukraine. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee, further commend Sophia Martanzin for her selfless acts of giving to those affected by the war in Ukraine. So, we're going to speak in a minute, but I'll just say she came to Rotary and was scared to death about speaking in front of us, but convinced us of the work that she did. And, and Jeremy from Flanders was also here, was a big supporter of you. But I can't tell you how much how proud we are at Hillsborough to, of the work that you're doing and the brave uh, effort that you and your family have done for those family members back in Ukraine. And I commend you, and I'd like to give you all a round of applause. Well, for the past, like, five months, I've been, like, as of all of you know, Russia has been, like, terrorizing Ukraine. And also for the past five months, I've been, like, painting paintings. And, well, <laughs> I want to thank you all for, like, helping, like, raise money and donating so much. I've raised, so far, $15,000. you like to participate you can follow me on instagram i brought some flyers so i'm gonna leave it on in there if you like to take uh also you can text me you can call me anytime if you like to donate if you like to buy sophia painting it's 15 dollars. we can mail it to you we can mail it to your family members and any other states uh she been mailing them all over america uh, so um, she gets excited when you take a picture and send the feedback. So uh, it's been amazing. Thank you so much for all the support. Thank you. We appreciate you very much. Slava Ukraini!
And I'm Slash. God bless you guys. <laughs> I paid for it. I paid for this. Listen, when I was in third grade, I think I was just trying to learn how to ride a bike and hit a baseball rather than doing what she does. So thank you very much, Sophia. Congratulations. You deserve it. All right. Our next proclamation is for Tara O'Brien. I think this should be in the Girl Scout. you got to do some recruiting for this young lady after you leave here. She's, she's already got close, right? Tara O'Brien has been a member of the Hillsborough Girl Scouts Service Unit for eight years. Tara joined the Girl Scouts in the early 1980s and has been serving them ever since in both New Jersey and New Hampshire, Vermont. Tara O'Brien recently earned a place in the Girl Scout Heart of New Jersey Service Unit Best Practices Working Committee where she contributes to the improvement of tools and processes across the GSHNJ service units. Tara Bryan was awarded the honor pin. The honor pin recognizes an individual exemplary service in support of delivering the Girl Scout leadership experience, which has had a measurable impact to two or more geographic areas or service, allowing the council to reach and surpass the mission delivery goals for their girls located in those areas. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the mayor and Hillsborough Towns Committee, congratulate Tara O'Brien for being awarded the honor pin and commend her for her continued service to the Girl Scout Heart of New Jersey Service Unit. Congratulations, Tara. It is, it is wonderful to be locally recognized by the township for my GSUSA honor pin. Uh, as an almost 40 year member, I still believe in the mission of Girl Scouts and our path to providing our girls with the opportunity to be G-I-R-L, go-getters, innovators, risk takers, and leaders. In third grade, my mom was tired of me hiding behind her leg and being the shy one. So when Girl Scouts was offered by my first leader, Sue Fenske, my mom signed me up. Little did she know where it would take me. I spent most of my remaining Girl Scout years with my leader, Linda, who I learned the majority of my leadership skills from. She may not have realized it fully, but then time and task management, integrity, follow through, and overall leadership became part of my core from those Girl Scout years. Fast forward to, forward to today where I have the opportunity to lead Hillsborough Girl Scouts with nearly 700 members and shape young women with those same core values and opportunities. However, I am not successful without the many leaders behind me, including my own co-leader, Jackie LaMata, my co-service unit managers over the years, Karen Briggs, Heather Bruchet, and currently Michelle Tuck, and an incredible service unit team, many of who are here today, of nearly 20 volunteers, keeping Hillsborough a strong Girl Scout town. Thank you for supporting me and for all of our service unit leaders and team members for supporting our girls. I would be remiss if I didn't thank my family for supporting my volunteer hours, some months pulling me away from home a little more than I'd like to admit. My husband is unfortunately traveling in Europe, uh, but my children, Colin and Kathleen, and my parents, Pat and Adam, and thank you to everyone for your constant support of my passion. If you ever, Tara ever approaches you, you can't even try and say no because she doesn't take no for an answer. So, thank you, Tara. Do we have some representatives from the 2022 Hillsborough High School girls track and field team here today? Yeah. Come on up. Come on up. Coach got dressed up for the event. Yep. <laughs> Let me take a couple of polo on, on this side. On the other side, too. Let me have yeah. Fill it in one more. Be the picture. There we go. Good. Good. Otherwise, Pam gets starts shaking. <laughs> the 2022 Hillsborough High School girls track and field team has been very successful th this season because of their hard work and dedication. The 2022 Hillsborough High School girls track and field team were the Central Jersey Group 4 state champions, Skyline Conference champions, Delaware Division champions, Somerset County champions, and the Somerset County Relay champions. The 2022 Hillsborough Girl Scout track and field team was led by coach Rich Rufi and assistant coaches Rocco Mazzaghetti, Jason Rudick, Emily Shipley, 
and Mary Beth Delisi and consisted of the following young athletes. Sophia Stahl. Preeta Joshi. Anna Kang. Danae Dewberry. Nevada Sundarajan. Rihanna Dudajak. Plus many more. I couldn't make About 80 more? Okay. Good thing we don't have a lady here. We'd be over a limit. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that, that we, the mayor and the Hillsborough Township community, hereby commend the Hillsborough High School girls track and field team, the coaches and parents, not only for a successful season, but for their hard work and dedication and commitment to the sport for those principles of good sportsmanship, teamwork, academic achievement, and the organization, endor and which the organization endorses. Congratulations, coach, and all the young ladies here. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Pani, for having us and the Township Committee. Uh, it was a lot of fun. A lot of it was unexpected this year, but I hope to be back soon. I can't say go to home, school's over. <laughs> you can go run, right? You got to start running, coach? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not in Hillsborough track when I, I didn't never ran in the summer. <laughs> All right, we have one special award left. Um, if you didn't notice, uh, our veterans area over here, our Garden of Honor, had a major facelift done this year. Um, it's important to all of us here in the committee that we, we honor our, our veterans and we felt it was, it was time to do an improvement. And this young man uh, stepped up and helped us attain this uh, and dedicated and donated most of his time to do that. Uh, so I'd like to call up Rob Jorgensen from Twin Oaks Landscaping. If you haven't seen it, it's gorgeous. We did uh, LED lights he put in that changes color. So first of all, Rob, from one landscaper to another, he did a great job. <laughs> and from the mayor to you, and on behalf of Hillsborough, thank you very much for your generous donation. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, we are completely honored to not only be a business in Hillsborough, but also to honor the veterans. Um, it was a very special uh, project for us that we were able to create such a nice area to commemorate the veterans and seeing as how it is the the the, the first site that you see when you come in the municipal building that was something that was really special so we were honored to provide not only our time and our efforts and really our heart of the company into making that part of Hillsboro 100 percent thank you very much So that, can con Mike. that concludes our proclamations and awards. Again, th congratulations and thank you to all those who participated. We will take a uh, brief pause of about five minutes for those who'd like to go home, uh, and we'll restart at uh, 8.05.
Okay, we're back. It's 8.05. Um, we uh, are moving. I'd like to ask we can jump out of order a little bit. And I'd like to ask, uh, with consent of my colleagues, that would move the following resolutions, number one and two, uh, out of order, and then number three by itself uh, out of order. So may I have a resolution or can a now, what do say? Motion. Motion's the word I'm looking for. To move uh, items one and two out of order, then followed by three by itself. So the first motion on the table right now is a motion to approve resolutions number one and two. Right. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, any comments from Dais? Mr. Ferrar? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to welcome uh, Vanessa LaVoy to the tax assessor's office and thank Deborah Blaney, um, our supervisor being here tonight. So looking forward to uh, Vanessa joining. She's gonna be a great part of the team. And also permanent status for Raphael Dayback as well uh, for uh, DPW worker number three. So thank you. Congratulations. Great. Thank you, welcome. Maybe, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have any other comments on the days? Okay. Any comments from the floor on consent one and two? Only just one and two. Maria Jan is six seven twenty East Freck Avenue, Manville, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Also a Hillsborough Township property owner. Lot eighty six, lot three, two one five five. Camp Lane Road. Uh, I have to say, I came up over here because you can't hear anything in the back. Uh, wow. Mr. Ferreira, there's always a problem. I don't know why your microphone is so short and everybody else has a long one. I don't know. Well, I encourage you to sit in the front. I've told you that before. I'm coming to sit in the front. Okay. Okay. So the only... Only ones on consent one and two only we're taking right now. Any okay. comments? So in regard to consent number one resolution authorizing mm -hmm. the hiring of Vanessa Lavoie to fill a vacancy in the position of field inspector assessment clerk in the tax assessor's office. Yes. Um, so it states, states here that there is, exists a vacancy in the position of field inspector. Yes. Is that uh, because someone left or are you creating another position? Someone left. Excuse me? Someone left. Someone left. Um, they went for another job. Who left? The last person that held the position. Oh, so you don't want to give a name? It's really irrelevant, but it's, you want to give them, I don't really matter. So. Logan. Oh, yeah, yes, I'm sorry. Logan Horvath left. I just want to make sure you can hear me. Logan, Logan Horvath was the employee that left, and Vanessa will be taking her, her spot. So the Logan. position was uh, the position was sent out to the public as well as internally here for union contract. So through the interviewing process, two rounds, uh, Vanessa was our number one candidate. So there was a, there's an opening. It's not a new, it's not a new job, it's a backfill. Okay, and so, so what Logan was doing and what the new person is, they're going to be doing the inspections for the annual reassessment program? Yes, correct, same job, same job title, same title, same description, okay. yes. How, how many, how many of these positions are there for field inspector? Two. Assessment clerk, there are only two? Two. So there are only two field inspectors. That's correct. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Good evening. Hello, Hello. Lockwood. It's Mr. Rivera. Um, I just want to thank um, our new employee for being here and facing this um, sort of unwarranted criticism. She just wants a job. So thanks for putting up with it and coming to work in our town anyway. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, seeing none, we'll move to uh, we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Uh, committee member Redding. Yes. Committee member Delcor. Yes, I'd like to welcome uh, Vanessa and congratulations to Rob. Deputy Mayor Erickson. Yes, and I uh, echo uh, Committee Member Delcor's sentiments to both. Welcome aboard. Mayor Lapani. Yes, welcome. Thank you for uh, being part of Hillsboro. We look forward to seeing you in, sorry, seeing you more in the future. So now I have a motion to uh, move uh, resolution number three. Uh, may I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Uh, I would like to read the resolution into, 
the record for those who don't know what it is. Uh, the resolution is, is entitled Resolution in Opposition to New Jersey Division of Alcoholic Beverage Control Special Conditions on Limited Brewery Licenses. It's about a page long, so bear with me and I will try and speak into the mic. Whereas the New Jersey Division of Alcoholic Beverage Control, NJABC, issued a special condition of each limited brewery license, aka craft brewery, in the state of state beginning February July 1 sorry Friday July 1 2022 and whereas under these license conditions craft breweries are limited to holding 25 on-site activities open to the general public annually as well as 52 private parties breweries can also attend 12 off-premise events such as town charitable and holiday celebrations and Whereas under these license conditions, craft breweries have restrictions on the types of television program they can air in the tasting rooms, restricts what type of live or recorded music they can play or host, limits what food options they can make available to customers, bans the sale of coffee and prohibits the sale of soft drinks and other non-alcoholic beverages not made on site at the brewery. So you can only drink, that's interesting. And whereas according to the National Brewers Association, 141 craft breweries operating in New Jersey in calendar year 2021 contributed almost, and I'm going to say it slow, two billion to the state's economy, creating over 11,000 jobs and an annual income of more than 55,000 per employee. And whereas the Hillsborough Township is home of one craft brewery, Flounder Brewing Company, located at Two Clerico Lane. Building 4, Hillsborough, New Jersey, and whereas the new conditions will force these local, homegrown, small businesses to rethink their business models and closely consider which events they should participate in or host, which will reduce their profits and their opportunities to engage in their communities, and whereas visiting these microbreweries and each of the unique experience and these proprietors have found exciting ways to encourage other local businesses, vendors, and artists in their communities, and whereas the governor and the state legislature should work with breweries to develop smart and fair law revisions and regulations that will guide state regulators at the New Jersey Division of Alcoholic Beverage Control on how to oversee the state's craft beer industry. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Township Community of Hillsborough County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, that one, is strongly opposed to New Jersey Division of Alcoholic Beverage Control special conditions on limited brewery licenses and requests the conditions be removed immediately. And two, the township clerk forward copies of this resolution to the elected officials of Somerset County, the leaders of the New Jersey legislature, and Governor Murphy. Do we have any other comments from the dais? Um, Mayor, if I might, um, this is just the, the the state is regularly criticized for being difficult to, for businesses to work here in the state. And this is just another example of the incredible overreach that our, our, our uh, leaders down in Trenton want to uh, enact to, to hurt a little small business that's, that's uh, a business community that's doing, that's doing uh, really good work in, uh, in creating jobs and creating environments that people want to attend. Um, I just don't understand why they can't just let our businesses uh, thrive on their own rather than feeling that they have to restrict uh, the number of events that they can go to or the, uh, or the types of uh, television programming they can have in there. It makes absolutely no sense. It's a ridiculous process, and I hope our leaders in uh, Trenton come to their senses and get rid of this ridiculous rule. Thank you, Mr. McGree. No. Anyone else? Well said. Okay. Um, we set our piece. Any comments from the floor? Jeremy? Well, as most of you know, I'm Jeremy, owner of Full Food, <laughs> owner of Flounder Brewing Company. Um, thank you very much for your support in trying to get these ridiculous overreach regulations removed. Just to put on the record for just two examples that came tonight um, on how this affects a small business like mine that's trying to create a community centric. A spot here in Hillsborough, a tourism spot here in Hillsborough, is um, Sophia, who got the proclamation before. We've done two fundraisers with her at the brewery. Uh, we can no longer do any more fundraisers for Ukraine until the end of the year because we're out of our 25 live events already. Um, we also just talked about 
how Twin Oaks redid the Veterans Memorial. Um, it was very common that we gave 10% discounts to veterans, first responders, um, and active military. We're no longer allowed to give discounts to anybody on alcohol. Um, so as Veterans Day comes along, we would always do some extra stuff. Um, so it's really just a perfect example of special interest overreach. And it, it is heartwarming to know that, you know, I can see the impact that we've tried to make here in Hillsborough um, just from your guys' support for, uh, for this resolution today. And I really thank you for that. Thank you. 100% support you. Thank you, thank Jeremy. You. And I would encourage anyone that you can visit Flounder. He has uh, some pre-written petitions that you can sign that they will mail in, or please contact your Senator Swicker. Uh, there's an email you can go on and, and send a letter, but I would uh, hope that they would reconsider uh, and allow our tourist industry to, to thrive. Uh, any other comments from the floor? Please. Hi again, Sofania Lockwitz. I'm just going to read into the record an excerpt from an article I just sent you, Mr. Panny. Um, it's by Jeff Alf Alworth, who is a writer living in Portland, Oregon, who writes about beer, cider, and occasionally politics, is what his bio says. Um, the title, and this is what he writes, is What the Hell is Happening in New Jersey? Um, and he actually has an answer to your question, Mr. Duckworth. Um, in public policy, there's a well-known form of corruption that perfectly describes what's happened in New Jersey, regulatory capture. That is, a regulatory agency becomes captured by the industry it was ostensibly created to oversee. He stresses that this is his private opinion and, and not a legal thing. Um, in the case of New Jersey, the state artificially imposed a limit on the number of outlets licensed to serve alcohol. This is terrible for anyone who wants to get into the business, but it's awesome, his emphasis, for anyone who already has a license. Over time, bars became power brokers and bent ABC to their will. The special ruling was a power play to brush back competitors. And he goes into the history of ABC um, and talks a little bit about um, <clears throat> the difference between brewery licenses versus the liquor licenses. And really what's happening is that the, the bars, which are a statewide cap that get traded around and moved around in the way that he described, describes it, are so lucrative, kind of like a, a taxi cab medallion in New York City, that, that people pay through the nose for them. Um, and frankly, they're scared because Flounder makes really, really good beer in a really, really awesome place where everybody in this town, no matter how well, how well we get along, has a great time there. I love going there. I'm going to go on Thursday for the Bluegrass Jam. Um, and if you hear some crazy lady singing baritone, it's me. <laughs> so, um, Jeremy, I, I love your place. And um, I sent this to, to you, Mr. Mr. Lopani, so you can share it with everybody. Um, but it's got, it's got a really Thank good description of regulatory capture. Thank you very much. I think uh, that was very well said and appreciate your input. Um, anyone else? I will take a roll call, please, then. Commander Member Redding? Yes. Commander Zalcor? Yeah, all our support. Deputy Mayor Erickson? Yeah, that's a yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sorry. <laughs> he said yes. Absolutely. And Good luck, Jeremy. Jeremy, anything we can do. Congratulations. Yep. Doing a great place. Yes. All right, so we're now going to go back on our normal schedule. Same bat station, same bat time. Uh, we have no new business at this time, so we will now take public comment on new business and on new business business and matters not on the agenda. So remember, this is comment on things that are not on today's agenda. Ms. Fork, please uh, read the comment section. The Township Committee welcomes input from the public. Please state your name and address, and please spell your name for the record. You will be given one three-minute allotment for your comments. Please understand that this public forum is not structured as a question and answer session. Comments are to be addressed to the mayor. Again, please keep your comments to three minutes. Thank you. Before we get involved, I do want to just say something because it may be on people's minds. So. Uh, there may be some questions regarding the estimated third quarter tax bills that have recently been received. It is important to note that the tax assessment process is separate than the budgeting process. The assessors through the annual reassessment program can assess property at 100% of market value. The Hillsborough tax assessor is conservative, but due to rising real estate mar market, the ratio of assessed value, value to market value is in the range of approximately 75 to 85%. I think we can all agree that market values have seen a significant increase, which again is driving the force behind assessed values. More specifically regarding the estimated third quarter bill you have recently reviewed or received, do not take the difference in the third quarter bill and multiply it by four to get an annual tax amount to be paid. So I think we have an example 
that we can call, but um, for example, do we have that, Ms. Burke, to put up the example? Okay. So uh, the 2020-21 value of this of this fictitious 123 Maple Street was 558,400 at our annual rate of 0.2348. So there was an assessed tax of 13,111 and 23 dollars, 23 cents, excuse me, with an increase to a value of 601,500, with our tax rate of 2022 of 02324 which is equal to the assessed value of 601.5, multiply the estimated tax rate of 0324, you'll see that the tax rate is 13,978.86. So it's about a $700 increase. It is not a, even uh, assessed at the, where most people are, are doing the math. So we'll be further providing additional frequent, we will be providing fresh, additional frequently asked questions on the township website and further assist understanding how the process works. So um, with that, you know, we have the, so if you have any comments on the, on the budget, we're doing that. But if you have any other comments, please uh, go, for, go ahead and you're welcome to go. Great. I'm John Tutunjan, spelling the last name is T-U-T-U-N-J-I-A-N. Hello, John. And I live at 150 Johansson Ave in Hillsboro. Um, well, first I want to thank the governing body because I know back in January you passed the resolution for the engineering and consulting on uh, behind our, my yard and most of Joe Hansen. Mm -hmm. And that was crucial because, you know, we come in front of you, I didn't really want a band-aid put on it because if the Department of Public Works came and cleared out the ditch, that's not a permanent solution. And, and I'll be honest, there's no way we're going to have any resale value on our homes with that because, you know, we have, so I'll, I'll mention it again. We're not flooding from the rear until we're flooding because of flash flooding. The sewer drains cannot take the capacity of water that's coming at us. Now we have new buildings going behind us. It has to be someone, a professional the firm has to come in. So I applaud you for that, but the sense of urgency is not there. I mean, this, this resolution got passed in January. There's been no action taken. I'm now in hurricane season. I don't know what to do. If I start going down that ditch with a chainsaw and a shovel, I'm sure some neighbors are going to be calling. So where do I go with this? I mean, there's tree limbs, there's debris. I mean, last, that one item I saw all the clog ups happen. I walked the ditch, I sent photos to the committee. You see the dire need. Can we get some emergency, like DPW, to go back for a week and just clear that ditch out? That's all I'm asking, because if that ditch is cleared out, that water will, it will go down. It went down the last two storms prior to Ida. So I mean, I'm just requesting, something be done before the next storm comes in thanks john and uh, i know that we've had emails and i'll i'll say we we did the phase study so phase one uh we'll be sending out to to bid to do just that the the cleanup of the ditch which we still require a dep license which is called a general license it takes about 60 days to get that license from dep so our our plan is by on the next township committee, August 8th to, to uh, August 9th, August 9th, excuse me, to do the award to go out to bid for that, that phase one. Okay. And then that will also be at the time that we do the apply for the uh, permit. Right. So if you do the math, you got July, August, September. So September, October, hopefully we can get the, you know, we'll have the bid in way before that, but we can't start till at least we get the permit. So to answer your question, that first phase is going to be done. Then there's a second phase, which we are still have to get done it, which is the engineering of an improvement of the of the area that you're in question of. We have since got most of that back, and then that will be budgeted and then sent out for a second bid on top of that for right. that, and that will be a more detailed plan, which will require more extensive permitting from the DEP. Perfect. I okay. appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Heather Boyce, B-O-Y-C-E. I live at 25 New Amwell Road. Um, this weekend, we had an issue with Royce Swim Club. Uh, uh, no secret to them. My family has been here. My mother, the house was built. My mother was four years old. All I ask is the same courtesy that's extended when the township does their fireworks. We were told by people at Roycefield yelling that they were on their committee that there were 30 cars and less than 100 people. 
Do you know what it's like when you come out on a Sunday morning and people are putting lawn chairs up in your front lawn under your trees? The stop sign by my house was blocked for three and a half hours after we asked the officer in front of the swim club to move it. You could not get down Cumberland or Lynn Court. You, there was no way you could fit a fire truck. And what bothers me is I, my response many times. This isn't the first issue we've had. We've gone to them. I'm told it's 50 years and get over it. 50 years I would like a solution between the neighborhood I live in and them. My children are the fifth generation to live in my house. Why should we be pushed out every time that there's a swim meet? And it really is a safety issue. My neighbors are generations and generations. Two years, it was nice. I'll tell you, it wasn't completely quiet. During COVID, the teenagers had parties. They were loud on their loudspeaker. We would ask them to stop. I have small children. But to the point on Sunday, it, it really is getting to be a hazard. I have many photos I can send you. We called police dispatch. And what was disheartening enough is being told that it was an event. It was a fundraiser. They would not come out and enforce laws. They parked in no parking zones. You couldn't move. You couldn't get out of driveways. And it's very hard. When you have the fireworks, people can't park. But yet every time there's a swim meet, no matter how many neighbors call, we're told that this is a special event. That's not fair. I don't understand why something can't be worked out. Uh, when there was the synagogue across from us, they had to rent the bank parking lot. They couldn't expand past theirs. Why something can't be worked out? Because it really is, I have no problem sharing, it really is a safety issue. And then the fact that I complain and then my neighbors tell me, talking to a Hillsborough officer, that then I'm a target because I'm complaining for my well-being. It's, you know, I have to put chains up because they use my circular driveway like it's a racetrack. They want to go back either towards 206 or down towards Beekman. That's all I'm asking for is something to be done because their board doesn't want to listen. And it really is disruptive. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. I'll look into that. And... Um... I know how to find you. I'll, I'll get back to you. Anyone else? Okay. Any other public comment? <laughs> Man knows how to use a mic. Must be an exposition. Good evening. <laughs> Hello. My name is Sean Glennon. G Glennon spelled G-L-E-N-N-O-N. -N -N uh, my wife and I are retired. We've been living here since 1996 on Van Barsdale Drive. I just asked Robert if he knew where Van Barsdale. I think Frank and Anthony know Van, Van Barsdale. Mm -hmm. All I'm going to ask is, uh, I've been just watching this. We, we, we moved in in 1996, okay? When we first moved in, if you, in your mind's eye, you can kind of think of Park Avenue, how really that is, looks, flowers, trees, et cetera, et cetera. But we didn't have flowers, but it was adorned with, uh, with trees, the, the three islands on Van Arsdale. Now for Van Arsdale, if you guys don't know where it is, it's off of Hillsborough Road, and it traverses over to Vliet. There are three separate islands. Van, uh, Hillsborough Road to uh, Nevins Court, the next one to Dilts, and Dilts down to uh, Vliet. It's a complete, this, a pair. You have to see it. The trains have been down for the better part of 10, 12 years. Now, it's either annual or biennial. Guys come out from the township and work on it. It's overgrown with, with weeds. The, the roots of the trees are still coming up on the papers. And it's just an eyesore. I see that the budget is up now. We're in, in, in flight now, 2022. I don't know if that's the fiscal year 2023, but it's sort of counterintuitive to be sending out a crew every year or every two years to work on this like weed killer and try and clean it up a bit. It's in completely disrepair. So if, if either we return to the way it looked back in the mid 90s or just tear it up and pave the street over because I invite any one of you to go down and take a look at it. Are you familiar with, I know you two gentlemen know what Van Arsdale. Do. Uh, do you know what Van Arsdale Drive is? No, but I'm the township attorney, so okay. uh, I don't know. Mr. Mayor, I think you know what it is, right? <laughs> I think we put the trees in there 30 years, 1991. You did? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Yeah, so you know what I'm talking I'm about. I'm familiar with it, yes. Okay. All right. 
don't mean to be a pain in the neck. I don't know if anybody else has addressed it. I've talked to a couple of my neighbors. We love Hillsborough. We're retired. My wife and I plan on being here for the next several years, hopefully God willing. But if you guys get this on the radar, again, it's a question I just wanted to pose. It's not a complaint. You get it on the docket, see what you can do about it. That's all. I'll come back to the next meeting of hopefully maybe get an answer on it or a resolution. Maybe it's something you can do in 2023. Sir John, can you email Pam with your information? Then we'll get we'll get sure. I got it. I'll give you my email, and I got ten pictures for you too, Pam. Okay. I just took a bath three hours ago. Okay. Yeah, just just come again. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. deal. Thank you for your time. Everybody. Thank you, Ms. Glenn. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh. Oh. Sorry. Oh. 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 We email the time right to three seconds, John. Okay. Maria Janusek, 720 East Freck Avenue, Manville, New Jersey. Um, I was at a meeting several, several meetings back, and on the agenda there were two liquor licenses, two resolutions regarding liquor licenses that were going to be put um, up for bid. I just wanted to find out if those liquor licenses were sold. There was no bids. There were no bid. There were no bids. No bids. So those two, obviously then they weren't sold. That's correct. Okay. Also, uh, there was supposed to be an auction of the Sunny Mead landfill. Was that auction held? It was the Western Road the landfill. Road it was held. It was. It wasn't the Sunny Mead landfill. It was the Western. Western. Yeah, Western. and it, it there was no bids. So there was an auction, but no bid. No bids. Okay, so that's still available, or is there going to be an, is there, no there bids. Be an auction done? I'm sorry. Is there going to be another auction? We'll have, we'll have to decide, but there was no bids. It was public advertised, no bids. It was, it was, it was publicly advertised? Yes. Okay. Um, also, uh, today we received the minutes from the uh, July 12, 2022 Hillsborough Township Committee meeting, and it talks about the resolution that it were, awarded a contract to RWJ Barnabas Health Network for emergency medical services. Uh, I think originally they put they put in a, a bid that was that was considered too high and it wasn't accepted. Was there a change made by them that this was kindly accepted? Go ahead, Anthony. Yes. So the bid came back uh, with zero. The what? Zero charges to the town. Zero charges. Correct. What was it before? Zero. It was zero before. More than zero. Right. So the, so the original contract was zero. But the one that just came in a couple months ago, they charged us, I forgot how much money, but way too much. So we rejected that bid, went back out, and uh, they came back uh, with a zero bid. With a zero bid. Correct. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Nope. Best for last. Hi, Andy. Um, so I just happen to have a collection of stuff. Hi, Stefania Lockwood. Sorry, I must not have heard. Uh, I happen to have a collection of information that is related to other things people have talked about. So, um, Johansson Avenue um, is, sorry, I'm trying to make sure I have the right information. Uh, Johansson Avenue is in a um, flood zone according to firm map, blah, 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 it ends in 0161E. Uh, is the active map that shows the, the flood zones in that area. Um, and it hasn't been updated since September 28, 2007. Um, and it's my understanding of the National Flood Insurance Program that um, after every major flood event, the community is responsible for updating the flood maps. And I imagine that there have been a couple of significant flood events since 2007. And actually, um, the National Flood Insurance Program actually shows that. Um, and it shows that the area over by Johansson Avenue, et cetera, um, is in the 1% total estimated loss of 1 to 10 million in property damage. Um, to give you some relative sense of what's happened in other parts of town, where I live on Millstone River Road in the Claremont section, our map is from 2016. I don't flood. So why is my map nine years newer? Also really interesting about the National Flood Insurance Program maps is that we're having an ongoing discussion in town with quite a bit of opposition, as I'm sure you're aware, to the um, warehouses that are being proposed. And the map for that area, want to guess when it's from? 2007. Bypass wasn't even an idea. 
So my question is, how are these residents in Johansson supposed to get the services they need when the township is not providing the updated flood insurance program maps that get them the coverage they need to make sure that their homes are okay when the new warehouses that we build that no one in town wants, including you guys, but your hands are tied because of the bad decisions regarding affordable housing 20 years ago, when are we gonna update their flood maps so that they get the coverage they need so they can sell their houses because they want out? When are we gonna update our maps so that we can tell Homestead Road LLC uh, no, sorry, no, we've, re we've redone this, and no, we cannot deal with this much because we are in a flood zone, because we have climate change, and this is not appropriate construction for this region. It is my understanding that the township has been aware that these maps are out of date, and that is worrisome to me. Thank you. Thank you. We'll look into that. Anyone else? You're talking about flooding here on Bisburg for Hickory Hill Road. Um, the, um, the issue with the flooding is that, I mean, I was here in July and August last year when we had the issue with Campus Drive and rejecting Campus Drive development because of concerns about flooding. And um, so was I. It, it was, yeah, <laughs> yes, you were. And what I clearly recall, and there was some of this discussion around um, the ARP program, the American Rescue Plan, was that at that meeting there was an initial um, proposal to have an estimate for, I, I guess it was stormwater control, not flood mitigation. At the time was stormwater control, and it was about a $55,000 contract. And I know American Rescue Plan money was used for that, and that was maybe one of the first uses of it. But it was really agreed to, and our, you know, our housing lawyer was here, that in Johansson Drive and in that area, we needed to mitigate for the flooding, as this gentleman was explaining, um, apart from all the development that's going on. That there's no chance of a development adding on Harvard Way or Campus Drive or whatever they're going to add can be successful when there's underlying problems there. So it is a year later, and I, I do agree with him. We need a better sense of urgency. I, I don't know why we're just going out for bids now. Um, if, you know, if if the, if the earliest the work could be done is September, October, November, we're going to be all into the hurricane season by then. So I, I just want to add to what he's saying. So I'll just say that the engineering study needs to be done. You have to contract out, go to bid. You got to get physically people there to do the work, then they have to devise the plans, and they have to then. So to say it can get done in 30 to 45 days is unrealistic. First of all, the if you remember, there was a lot of people flooded in the state of New Jersey. And there was a lot of people doing the same work all over the state that we were asking. So it wasn't like there was nobody available to go to just Hillsborough because nobody else in the state of New Jersey was doing the same thing that we were doing. So we were all fighting over the same engineers to go out there and do the same work that we, were, that we wanted, right? So you have to remember that this, is, this was not, though it's a Hillsborough issue, it was a statewide issue. The whole state of New Jersey was underwater. The ARP money was brought. People were using the ARP money to do the same thing that we were. So all these studies were being done by engineering companies and the surveyors that they hired to go out and do the surveying. And of course, you haven't heard there's a labor shortage, so people didn't have the people to get out there. So it took time. It just took, we took time to get the people out there to do the work, to do the surveys, then to bring the surveys and put it into paper and develop the plan because say it would be done faster, we'd love to have it done faster. But we also want it done right. So um, will it get done this year, the first phase? I am hopeful. It, but the real, the real rubber meets the road is the second phase. And the second phase is going to take some while because that takes some extensive engineering uh, that quite honestly is, in, and the DEP permits is going to be until next year. OK, well, I don't know if I should bring this up. Um it's a budget issue too, but I believe the ARP money. It was not a budget. It was, it was strictly just getting people out there to the site to do the work. The monies were always appropriated immediately, so that's not the issue. Okay. We have, we so have, I don't have, really see it in the and, 2022 and budget either. Don't have to because it's not part of the budget. Well, it's, it's separate than the budget. Yeah, because the phase two plan, we don't have a budget number yet, but it's outside of the budget because it's, it's going to be with, with ARP money. So that's why you're not seeing it. But the issue is that. Uh, we still don't know ultimately what the final remediation plan will cost. 
So until that second phase gets done, that's when we'll understand. So if you get, if you want to talk about the timing, I guess that's your prerogative. You can certainly do that. But the reality is this has been a problem for um, a significant amount of time. I commend the mayor for standing up in every meeting and talking to the residents when they came up. And, and we've put a plan in place to get this resolved. Um, we had to have engineering work done. We had to ensure that what we were being told made sense and was corroborated with uh, our own engineering team and to make sure that we, when we went out to bid that we had information that made sense. And we're in that in that process now. So um, if you want to talk about timing, I guess you can. But, but I think we're, uh, I'm, I'm glad that we're taking the project to, to try to solve this once and for all. And we do have money set aside to be able to do that. And uh, it'll take a little bit longer. But we've, we've tried to keep the residents up to date. They know that we're, we're working this issue. And when we have more information to share, uh, we will do so. And um, I can, again, I can bring this up during budget. But I, my understanding is the ARP money had to be expended last year and this year? No. No? no? Sure. OK. Yeah, so, there, so there will be money reserved for this? It's already set aside and, and, and put apart and then, yes. Okay. As long as I'm on this dais, it'll be there. And, and plus, so don't, you know, don't worry. Anyone else on topics, not on business? You want to come on up. Name and address, please. Good evening. Uh, my name is Andy Damanti, 116 North Street Road. Um, I've been a resident in Hillsborough for 25 years. When I moved into the area, I was told by the township that um, the, um, the minimum of the property uh, allowed in Hillsborough would be half an acre. For the 25 years, especially lately, I've been seeing uh, so many townhouses being built over here. And that causes uh, school taxes uh, taxes being raised because the schools um, are being um, bigger built bigger and because um, um, there are other components too my quarterly tax bill has been risen around 50 percent 40 between 40 and 50 percent that's unheard of uh, my property value didn't go up 50 or 40 percent I'm sure of that I don't plan on moving out. I like Hillsborough. I like the area. I would like to find out. I, I was talking today to a um, couple of the um, township uh, representatives, and I was told that uh, not only the values of the homes and the properties uh, has risen, but also because of the budget of the uh, school has risen, the budget of the township, and also the budget of the uh, fire department. How much are the um, uh, how much is the total amount of the each budget that has risen? Great question. We're going to actually we're going to talk about that later. So instead of talking about that, because that's part of our presentation, the budget. So we're going to answer a lot of those questions. So I'll just go back to the one thing that you asked about the 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 size of the properties, Court. So the uh, Single-family homes are different than what we call plan development for affordable housing, which is apartments, right? So that is a, that is a different zoning altogether. So, but to build a home on a on a lot that's quarter acre or whatever, it all depends on what the agreement is with affordable housing and how that's been zoned. So, for example, sometimes you'll do cluster zoning, so you'll make the lot smaller to reduce the footprint of a, of impervious to to maintain the um, wetlands or fields so instead of dispersing the development over a large area you shrink it to so it's in one small area preserving the the uh, rural or the the uh, fields or pastures instead of disturbing them so that's that's a way of of improving uh, the impervious surface or reducing the impervious surface so it all depends on what the plan is but as far as your questions on the budget if you sit tight in about 10 minutes you'll you'll get that answer is there any um, chance of uh, reducing the wetlands? Reducing it? We, we never want to reduce the wetlands. 
you because know, we because a because you have to get approval from the DEP and okay. the DEP won't let us do that. I obviously. live by the wetlands. It's wet. There's mold around. It's not really nice to see there are a lot of bugs, mosquitoes, and so on and so forth. Can't touch the wetlands. <laughs> You can try, you can make, as a builder, you have to make it an application for an LOI, which is letter intent from the DEP, and most likely they're not going to let you, so, unfortunately. Okay? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on at a public comment um, to our first matter of business. May have a motion to open public hearing on ordinance 2022-12. Excuse me. Did you finish? We haven't got to those yet. We finished one to three already. We're now on back to uh, on track at the end. Yes. So may have a motion for 2022-12. So moved. Thank you. Dr. Corr, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. None. Uh, any discussion from the dais? Okay, none. Um, any just comments on the floor? Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, comments from the floor on this one for opening here for 2022-12? This a, a hearing or is this an introduction? It's a hearing, right? It's a hearing. It's on for public hearing. All right, so any comments from the floor on 2022-12? Maria Janusik, uh, excuse me for a minute because I have to find it. This is an ordinance to exceed the 2022 municipal budget appropriation limit and establish a cap bank is what we do every year. Uh, when we do our budget. Okay, so uh, how did you come up with the amount of $284,409.86 uh, to be in excess um, the increase? Where did you come up with that exact total? We have the capability as part of the, uh, the rules for budgeting to be able to uh, create a 3.5% increase um, to, the, to the appropriation. So it's a math form of three and a half percent. So, so it basically gives us room to work on the budget until we finalize it. So this is three and a half percent of the budget that you have for this year? For the, for the last year. Three and a half percent of last year's budget? Yes. Prior year. Prior, 2021. The prior year. So you're increasing... Not increasing, but you're, well, in excess of last year. What was last year's budget? 30. I actually haven't had it. $32,897,668. Last year's. And then, so now this 3.5% three this three, three totals yeah. 284. Yeah, I just want to be clear, though. Is it, that, that is simply a math number that allows us to have it. A budget in place until we finalize the budget. That's all that represents. We're not spending it. It's just a number. Okay, you're saying you're not spending it, whatever. But what happens? So, so if you if you don't need it, it's not used well, or it's today, reserved. If, if, or it's reserved. If or we if we done? can get to it, we're going to get to approve our budget tonight, and then we won't have to worry about what that temporary number is. We're introducing the budget. Okay, tonight. but I just want to be clear on what, what what this what this is supposed to mean. That's what I that's why I wanted to find out. So this amount here. Uh, if the budget, if the budget is approved, this 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 number no longer uh, has any meaning. Correct. It, it allows us to carry this carry this over. What? Okay. What happened was they instituted a cap law in the state of New Jersey. So, for example, talking to Mike, Mr. Early, just just by way of example, let's say ten million dollars was your budget, and the government said you could you can increase your budget by three and a half percent. So the next year you could adopt the budget, which was ten million three hundred fifty thousand dollars. And then the year after that, you could do another three and a half increase. So you could go up to 10 million over, I'm not going to do the exact math, but 10 million, 700,000. And you could keep doing that. And so 
townships say, well, wait a second. Town A, who's just like me, adopts a budget for 10. Then the next year, they do 10 million 350. Then the next year, they do 10 million 700,000. And then the next year, they're over, they're over $11 million. I decided not to do any increase. I held the line. I held the line at 10 million. I didn't increase it at all. Now, all of a sudden, I need to put 400,000 in, but that puts me over 3.5%. That's not fair. And the legislator said, you know what? You're right. That's not fair. We're penalizing people for being good government. So what they did was they enacted this particular statute to allow townships to bank it. Doesn't mean they use it. It just means they bank it. So, and they can bank and they can carry it up to three years. And that way, if they do need it in the future, two years from now, three years from now, the next year, they can budget for it without exceeding the cap bank. That's what it's all about. Every single municipality in the state of New Jersey that I know of, I don't know a single municipality in the state of New Jersey that doesn't adopt this exact ordinance every single year as part of the budget process. So that's what it's all about. So this amount, if it's not used this year, it's banked. Correct, it's banked. We're going to carry it to next year. Yeah. So next year's budget would also have the same type you of thing. You can keep on banking, you can carry it for a three year period, and it just increases the amount that you can increase in, in the future. It just gives you, like my example, it allows you, for instance, if I held the line in year one to 10 million, I held the year I held the line in year two to 10 million again. In year three, I held the line to 10 million again. Well, now if I wanted to go to year four, if I didn't have this bank, I could only go to 10 million 350. But this would allow me to say, no, no, we're going to allow you to bank those three years, and now I can go up to actually $11 million. But we've never taken, I don't think in every municipality we've never done it, but, Not to that but we always we always oh, adopt so it. Every, so every so single so municipality does it. So, every, so each each year, so you can, like in year four, you could combine the the three the the, the, the three prior, and then use that in the fourth year. Correct. The, you could. The whole right. So what they're saying is, hey, you didn't take advantage of the three point five increase. You could have. You didn't. We're not going to penalize you for good government. We're not going to penalize you for not raising more money than you needed. We're not going to penalize you for that. So that's all it is. Okay. All right. So in year four, you can. You all should yeah, exactly. You okay, go. thank you. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Roll call, please. I'm sorry, it should just be motions. Motion to, to close, close and adopt. So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commander Brennan. Yes. Commander Mandelpour. Yes. Deputy Mayor Erickson. Yes. Mayor LaFontaine. Yes. So we have an introduction of new ordinance 2022-13, an ordinance amending the salary ordinance of the Township of Hillsborough include new positions and set salary ranges for consideration in a public hearing be held on August 9th of 2022. May I have a motion to introduce ordinance 2022-13? So moved. And a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mayor Britting? Yes. Mayor Delcor? Yes. Mayor Erickson? Yes. Mayor Lopani? Yes. And now what we've all been waiting for. We have the presentation of our 2022 municipal budget, Nancy Costa, our CFO. Um, she'll do our presentation, and after her presentation, I will have some comments as well as Commander Mendelko. Okay. Ms. Costa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Ready. Ready. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. 2022 municipal budget totals $33,030,722, $30, and it's going to be funded with $12,186,981 in revenues and a tax levy of $20,843,740. Our total rateables this year are $7,139,185,995, and by doing the math, the municipal portion of the taxes this year will be $0.29 cents per $100 of value of your home. The tax levy in state aid provides 73% of this budget. Items like licenses, permits, shared services, court fines provide our additional revenues. 
And as growth in the township continues, the UCC fees, which were 6% last year, have jumped up to 7% this year of our revenues. 2022 showed an increase in municipal court fines as that department rebounds from the COVID-19 loss of income. The township continues to main maintain shared service agreements for two municipal courts and this evening may possibly add a third shared service for municipal court beginning in October of this year. As we all know, interest rates are dropping and therefore our interest on investments was down this year. We did go into a new agreement for banking services this year. We now have a firm rate which will not change over the life of our banking contract. So that should bring that number back up next year. And again, state aid remained flat. If a municipality wishes to increase their tax levy more than the 2% cap, they can do so by adding any of these additional costs, including our mandated pension obligations, our increased debt service pay payments, and our special emergency from hurricane item. These allowances this year would have allowed us to raise our tax levy by $332,000. Since 2011, the township could have increased taxes by over $3.9 million if we had used those exceptions. The township committee has never used any of the levy cap exceptions to increase the taxes more than the 2%. This year's tax levy increase is 1.872%, well below the 2% cap. In 2022, 24% of our budget will go towards public safety, police, et cetera. Public works at 15% and our other departments at 15, while insurance and benefits will be 14% of the spending in this budget. The budget appropriates $885,000 in capital improvement funds, which will be helpful to use for future capital purposes. The state mandated Pension contributions, of which we have no control over, are over $3.1 million. During the mild winter, we were able to reduce our snow costs to $395,000 this year, which is a savings of $190,000. Unfortunately, in anticipation of our climbing gas prices, gasoline and diesel fuel costs were increased by $145,000 over the 2021 budget. This chart shows the trend in the four main components of the tax rate, school, county, municipal, and the fire district. School taxes make up 64%, 66.4% of our tax rate. County tax is 17.3, municipal tax is 13.2, and our fire district 1.9%. Our required open space taxes are 1.2% of your tax rate. The township's rateable base increased from both added assessments for new construction and our ongoing annual reassessment program. This provided a larger total assessed value over which the tax levy is distributed, resulting in a municipal tax rate decrease from 31 cents to 29 cents this year. And that concludes my budget presentation. The full budget presentation will be on the, the website tomorrow as well as the adopted budget assuming the budget gets adopted thank you Ms. Costa uh, once again whoop, Mike thank you Ms. Costa once again I'd like to thank you uh, our finance team led by liaison committeeman Frank Delcor administrator Ferrer and of course our CFO Ms. Costa um, this budget is a result of our team's continued fiscal responsibility not using the 2% cap, keeping our tax levy as minimal as we can uh, regarding municipal operations, despite the, the cost of the, uh, cost increases, which affect all of us, not just at home, but here also. Um, balance of budget of this magnitude is not an easy task. The levy of services provided to our community is one of the reasons Hillsborough is sought after place is a sought ourselves on our continued fiscal responsibility, remain committed to pay as you go debt plan, which results in the township maintaining a double A bond rating. As I indicated during the introduction, the township saw an increase in total rateable value of, for 2022, 2022 of 552 million, an 8.3% rateable increase, which therefore increases the tax base over which the levy is distributed. As a result, the municipal tax rate continues to be reduced. 
Um, when we sit here with Ms. Costa and Frank and Anthony and we go through a budget and you look at all those numbers and of course you don't realize until you get involved in this that, you know, even the, uh, as Ms. Costa said, the, the tax levy that we collect isn't even enough to cover the entire budget. We still rely on the state aid. So theoretically, if the state aid wasn't received, your tax would be almost probably 50% more. So even though the taxes that we all pay, and, I'm, and everyone in the states pays, and I pay twice because I own a business, um, it is, doesn't even cover the full cost of, of running this township. And we take it seriously to squeeze every penny. As, as our administrator Ferreira said, we look for grants. We look for shared services by adding another court and ways to save money to this township. Um, and we all take it seriously because, like we said, we all sitting here pay taxes also. So um, we understand that uh, there's uh, always concern about taxes and cost of living increases. Obviously, we can only control what we can control, and that's the 13% that Ms. Costa just alluded to. Um, and uh, this year, we, um, you know, we really tried to make sure that we minimized, as always, the impact on the residents. And I'd like to, since this is Community Delcor's last hurrah here um, with our township, I'd like to give the floor to him for some, some comments. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Um, you know, every year, the uh, I always commend the people that. Uh, really work on the budget led by our, our CFO, Ms. Costa, and Mr. Welcome Ferrer. And I, I get an opportunity that. And I get an opportunity to uh, uh, regularly participate in that process. Um, as someone that uh, started my career in a, in a finance capacity, so uh, it's something I've enjoyed and something I, uh, I like to work on. And one of the things I think uh, I take away each year when we do the the budget is I, I look at the, you know, really the, the restraint sort of in, in spending that this municipal body tries to undertake. Um, it, it may not have been um, jumped out at you in the, in the budget presentation, but just for uh, understanding, the total budget um, went up uh, about 100 um about $150,000 from last year. Um, that's the amount of spending differential that we're talking about. Um, in an environment where we are experiencing 8% uh, and the tax rate is dropping. So your municipal tax rate uh, is 29 cents out of your total tax rate, which is estimated at somewhere around $2.32. If you don't want to do that math, it's about 13%. So uh, what, what each resident spends on their property tax bill uh, for their home, um, the municipal government, the work that we do and what we're responsible for, represents 13% of that number. Um, about 33 million total budget and a tax levy of about 20, just under 21 million. Um, and that tax levy has been, uh, you know, high 19s up to 21 uh, for the last uh, five or six years. It, it, uh, we've kept it increasing less than 2% uh, each year that we've had that cap in place. And in particular, the last five or six years, uh, the rate has dropped. And we haven't seen a rate increase on the municipal side in more than a decade. Um, so. That just a reflection of the overall commitment to try to make sure that we're able to provide uh, services at a at a cost um, that the residents have come to expect. I know sometimes you see your tax bill and you wonder, um, from a property tax perspective, uh, where that that goes. But I can tell you, uh, from the municipal portion of that, um, it's a it's a relatively small fraction, and that that is driven by not just actually very little by, by us, but, but, but significantly by the employees in town who are committed to ensuring that they can deliver services to our residents um, in the most economical way possible. And uh, led by our administration group and our finance team, uh, that's how we get to these, uh, to these numbers. So uh, we, we 
pay as you go. We don't take uh, extra costs that we could. Uh, we talk about the cap bank. We've never utilized any of those cap dollars. Um, we, we continue to kind of do our budgets as we go because we think it's the prudent thing to do. And uh, I continue to be uh, very, very proud of the budgets that we're able to put forth. So thanks to everyone that participated in this. Um, and uh, it's been, uh, I've enjoyed uh, working on these budgets. Thank you, Mayor. Only a finance guy with can enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enjoy maybe wasn't the right yeah. word. It's all right. We understand. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Costa. Um, adoption. All right. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, in case you missed it, when Ms. Costa did the the charts there of what percentage of your tax rate is when you pay, I'll reiterate again for the record, the 13.5% is the township. The county is 17%. Fire district is 2%. Open space is 1.2, I think she said, right? And uh, your school is 66.5% roughly. Yep. So we get a very small piece of the pie, though we collect it for everybody and then disperse it. It's Most of it is not ours. Thank you again, Ms. Costa. Uh, May I have a motion to approve the following uh, resolution authorizing the 2022 municipal budget to be read in by title only? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Councilman Dez? Nope. Guys, it comes from the floor. Councilman Floor? Okay. This is the chance to come up and ask questions. I said this is just to read a title only. Okay. It's not the it's not adoption. The well, we'll do that next. Just okay. so next one. Great. Just want to make sure you're. Yeah. 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 Don't get this is title. I don't know why they break it that way, but you got to do title first, and then you do the whole thing. Yes. Because otherwise, you'd have to read the budget every single line on all 88 pages. No, we don't want to do that. Okay. okay. No comments from floor. Do I have, uh, roll call, please? Chairman Brittany. Yes. Mayor Delfour. Yes. Mayor Erickson. Yes. Mayor Lee Yes. Okay. Now may I have a motion to approve the following resolution adopting the 2022 municipal budget. So moved. Second. Second. I don't believe there's any comments from the day. I think we've all said our piece. So now we have comments from the floor. Please come up to the mic and you can have questions for. Mm -hmm. Just a reminder to state your name and address for the record, please. Mm -hmm. When you come in, 116 North Stones Road. I would like to find out. Excuse me. 116 what? No Stones Road. No stone roads? No stone roads. Okay. Yes. I would like to find out, can you go into the details of the budget? For example, 67% for the school budget. Uh, can, can, you, can you please speak into the mic because they can't okay, hear you no otherwise. Um, like I mentioned before, um, when I moved in, I was told um, mainly Hillsborough is going to be developing uh, the areas uh, populated by 55 or over. Right someone, now, someone I told you that? Yes, that uh, it's, uh, who told you that? Well, uh, at the I time, don't think, I think they, you got they, bad information, they, but that's okay. No, be, because <laughs> um, the main idea behind it was to avoid um, raising the taxes, to avoid building the schools and so on. The state of so, New Jersey uh, struck down the, the ability of just building 55 and overs to reduce it. You can't. We can't do that. Okay, but in building a lot of town halls we accelerate a lot of young students and that's why probably the school budget will be growing and is growing i would like to find out can you go into the details of the budgets and what for example um how much exactly and on what uh, we are um, accounting for the money uh you know for the budget can you please do so we can't describe what's in the school budget because we don't do it. That's done by the Board of Ed. Uh, okay. So the Board of Ed supplies us a number. Okay. And well, then so if it comes to a, a town, township and the fire department, I mean, where are the money uh, uh, accounted for? Okay, so the only money that is in the municipal budget is the money that is collected on behalf of the town, the 29 cents per $100 of value. That's all that is part of this budget document. Hey, Nancy, can you just pull up the, the pie chart? I think yeah. 
to, to give an idea again. And that represents 13 percent of the overall budget, correct? The pie chart. The one that gave where the where the keep going. appropriate. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah. That shows where the money is spent. That shows you how the money is spent out of just the municipal portion of the taxes. Okay, 13%. so this is the percentage wise. I understand. Yes. If it comes to a dollar amount, can you point it out how much uh, is uh, like uh, how many uh, millions? And are you talking about, for example, how many millions of dollars we collect for the school and for the county? No, and the, the, the budget allocating the, the uh, certain areas for the budget. So, yeah. so I think, Nancy, what so, she's saying is if you took the, the total amount of the municipal budget right. and then 24% would be the police. Right. So what the total amount of the budget times uh, so 24%. The total is budget is about is just over 33 million. Right. So okay. you can do the math. 24% is about a quarter of that. So give or so take 8 million right. is for public safety. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. So, uh, okay, so public safety, that means... Um, Your police department, mostly. Okay, so if it comes to uh, getting new cars, uh, raises, the, or the, the police officers, all the equipment, uh, all the uh, all do, we, the, do you have any details? Um, yeah, it's all in the budget. It, it, there's there's significant detail within the budget. It's in the back. It's in the, there's a there's a document in the back that gives all the detail. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, okay. The budget, the document in the back will show you every single department what their salaries and wages are and what their individual operating expenses are for every department within the township. It'll also show you our debt payments, our pension payments, our health insurance payments. Mm -hmm. Should show you everything you need. Okay, one more question. Sure. Uh, because like I mentioned earlier, my, um, I mean not only mine, but I understand the values of the homes uh, uh, grew dr drastically due to uh, increased um, interest rates and it's been growing, but um, how this relates to assessed value and um, having a higher taxes? The, well, I if I mean, I mean, I know how this relates, the, but the can The assessed we, value of your home has really nothing to do with the budget. The assessed value of your home is based upon market value. Yes, what, but whatever, whatever, whatever you could, sell, what they believe you could sell your home for in 2022 is what should be assessed as the That's what you should be. But usually, my understanding was when the uh, value of the homes uh, has risen, uh, the interest rate uh, uh, apply, uh, that was applicable to calculate the tax rates were uh, getting lower. Is this so, the same? Uh, I, if I may, just so, so the, the, what happens is when the values go up, because we, we now have a larger base of assessed value, that's why you, you see the tax rate decrease so the tax rate for the for the municipal portion went from 31 cents to to 29 cents right that uh, on every hundred dollars of assessed value so what would that if your house if the assessed value of your home did not change your taxes would have for municipal portion would have went down but unfortunately well but but that's the way our unfortunately that's the way our our municipal system works in New Jersey, I, I wish it wasn't that way too. But the only way that we have to assess taxes at a local basis is based on property tax, and that has to be based upon what the what the value of your home is. It's not just local; it's yeah. everybody, yes, yeah. it, state, everybody. Is it tax possible base. to have uh, uh, interest rate uh, lower than the, just uh, the, the the interest rate has nothing to do with it? I don't know what you mean by interest rate. The, the, the tax rate. The, 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 in order to calculate the taxes, the property taxes. Yeah. We set the tax rate lower, based. Um, rate. We did lower it. Then point two. No. Who decides about that? Well, because we have a budget that we have to, in order to provide a certain level of services, that's what the budget requires us to do. And so the bud, the tax rate is ultimately determined by what the assessed value is and uh, against what we need to raise from a tax perspective. Okay, so everything is done based on the budget, and budget determines actually... Yeah, but again, I want you to understand, for this community, the, the entire 40,000 residents that live here, your municipal budget went up $150,000. I bet your house value probably went up more than that. 
you know what, it, it really doesn't concern me because I don't leave, uh, I don't plan on leaving it. Uh, so I, really I, my point is the, the budget is has essentially flat over year over year. So mainly the school budget. Yeah, 66 percent school budget. Yep. Two thirds of your tax bill. Yep. And then so how can, how can we uh, uh, make sure that we're not going to keep growing the school budget? Because I, I understand, like um, we allocate certain amount of money to have a good teachers, to have a uh, a good education for our youngsters, and that's great. But a couple times happened that even though we had um, allocated certain amount of money for education, that money went to other municipalities. That's not something we can do. That's not, we have no control over that. That's Board of Ed. We, get those we, have, the board of ed. we deal with the municipal portion of the budget. We don't control that. So right now we just didn't include the municipal portion. That's all we ever have. That's all we can do. Yep. The Board of Ed has its own governing body that's elected by you. Its own staff, its own hierarchy. They they set the tax levy, and they and we just collect it, just like the county, just like the fire. You know, we're just, we happen to be the funnel that it all goes to to make it easier for one tax bill. But we have no control of what how they spend their money or how they they attach it. Mm -hmm. So only one hundred fifty thousand for the town. That's all. Our increase of our revenue, our collected, is one hundred fifty thousand year over year. It's even less. It's the like hundred forty. Yeah, roll yeah. roll number. So if you notice, though, even as I said, the, the, the total budget is 33 million for the town. We're only collecting 20 million eight in revenue from our taxpayers. So we're getting, you know, 13 million in aid from the state. So if we didn't get that aid for the state or if the state aid ever actually dropped, your tax rate would go even higher. So you're not, we're not even collecting the total burden of tax to run this town because of the aid. Well, but you are. You're paying for it in your, in your taxes, but essentially we're, we're not double taxing you, so to speak. But I, I would suggest uh, on Mondays they have the school board meetings over at uh, Aris. Uh, not Aris. Um, Amsterdam. Aris. Aris, right? Uh, was it the, the first Monday of the month or something? In the summer, it's around. Yeah. You check the website. But those questions, I would, I would encourage you to ask. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, Next. Good evening, Stefania Lockwood, Most Town River Road. Um, Mr. Delcor, I was looking at the minutes when I was waiting for the meeting to start because I thought it started at 7. Um, and I believe that each of those new officers that were hired last month, their starting salary was what? 53,000 no, times yeah. 3? So we didn't even raise our total municipal tax levy to cover those three new positions. That's how good of a job you guys are doing. We, well, we hired three officers, whether they're new positions or whatever, we hired three officers to, to really put that in a real world sense, $140,000, $150,000, that's three police officers, brand new police officers that just started in town. Like, that's not waste. It's not waste. And I know that you know that I am not going to stand up here and blow smoke. That's not waste. That's, that's good governance. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As to the, as to the school side, um, I've got a kid in town, and um, to say that we're not, um, <laughs> wow, our schools are, I'm sorry, our schools are so underfunded because of the same machinations that you just described with caps and levies and 2%, and I'm doing a little dance. We can't raise enough money to do what we need to do in the schools because of these same things. And quite frankly, it is offensive to me as someone who moved here in 2013 because of this township's stellar reputation to hear people who helped contribute to that reputation and who benefited from that reputation then complain and moan that because their kids got such a great education, all of us young and whippersnappers moved in and want the same for our families. That is insulting. You made a community that people want to live in and then we get here and you try to chase us out. And I am not talking to any of you and I think you know that. This is insulting to me as someone who has a kid in that school, a kid who is not receiving the services that we can't provide for. You know if you've been to a Board of Education meeting, if you've watched a Board of Education meeting, that if Greg Gillette and I agree on something, 
there's a really good chance that there's probably some truth to it. And quite frankly, when Greg and I are both saying that, gee, wouldn't it be great if we could actually raise our cap and actually have the money to hire the teachers that we actually need, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then to come in here and to claim that somehow you guys aren't doing a good enough job and are running, running the town into the ground and whatever, it's insane to me. It is absolutely insane that this township has been tied for so many years partially through some fault of its own. I think we can't, we can't go back in time and change what happened with affordable housing in the past. So if this different decisions had been made, it might, have been, it might have been in a different place. But it is what it is. This is the hand we've been dealt. And to tell me that my kids got mine, got theirs rather, and your kids, psh, no, no, that's not okay. That's the town that you made, that's the town that you created, and we, it is the town that all of you have chosen to serve and represent, and I am grateful and appreciative for that. As much as we disagree on so many fundamental issues, I am appreciative of that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the school funding formula we know is not working, yeah. just to answer your point, and um, I've had conversations with numerous people above my pay grade here, uh, and they can't explain it. Uh, why we were cut and Montgomery was given a large increase and Franklin was, you know, it, it just, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason. And unfortunately, you're correct. The, uh, the, the students bear, bear the uh, burden of, of that and the teachers. Any other comments? Now, Bisberg for Hickory, Hickory Hill Road. Um, just a couple of questions about some of the line items. Um, I, I can make them a comment, but I would prefer if I could just um, ask them. The Somerset, because it's they're in here, and there's there's some items there's not very much explanation on. The Somerset County Open Space Recreation Grant. It's shown that there's a grant for from the county for $250,000 for next year. Has there been any publicity on that? Is there any plan? Of what to do on that? Did the county grant it with some plan? Yeah, so that's uh, so that is um, our gazebo that we'll be putting out. Uh, we're just going through the process and the paperwork and the funding. So we put together a plan that we've been working hard on the past year, and the county has granted us that money uh, for a gazebo. We plan on putting at one of the parks. So and so that was given a grant to put a gazebo over at um, uh, Mersion Trails, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah, where the old police station used to be. So there'll be a gazebo there so people can... Uh, can you please not talk in the audience, please? Excuse me. Can you please be quiet? People are trying to hear. Thank you. Um, to build a gazebo, to make it a family area for people to congregate, have a picnic or whatever. So we got a, we made an application through our grant writers, through the open space monies to uh, and the park grant in which we re received. And it's in the as Mr. Ferrar said, it's in the process to be de designed and put out to bid. Okay, um, on that same page on sheet nine, uh, this is back to the American Rescue Fund. So it shows that approximately two million, a little more, was realized in cash in 2021. There's no number for 2022. So, uh, first of all, I, uh, my question is, what primarily did we spend that $2 million on? And when are we going to spend the other half? And, where, you know, is the stormwater part of this? So, to when we're going to spend the other half, we have five years, I believe, to use that. So, in my opinion, I was not anxious to spend everything at once to save a little for rainy day, so to speak, because we don't know what the total cost of our friends over at Johansson is going to be, though we did appropriate money. And who knows whether else that may come up that we have to pay for. We have a lot of outfall studies we have to do and repairs from all the drains that were uh, damaged in, in Hillsborough. And I'll just tell you, we got an estimate for the other day that is about a million dollars to do all the repairs of all the outfalls in this town, because we have a big town. So to tell you when we're going to spend it, we don't have a date and we don't we don't want to rush into it. We're going to be conservative and to use it where it really needs to be done. As far as Ms. Costa, as far as what the line items were, is it? do we have a, a list of those? Yes, we have a list. We have a list of what we spend to date, and right. we have a list of what we'd like to spend. Right. Absolutely. So, so I guess two questions. Is sure. the money for the... Um, for the stormwater project, it, does it have to be in here for 2022 to be used in 2022? Are, 
I, I think that we're going to do some major storm in no. 2022. Doesn't have to be in there. And but we'll still do the work. Correct. Okay. And then what in general? I, I did see some small things like with masks and you know on some of the bill lists. But what in general is that two million spent on? Kind of a lot of things. Uh, a lot of things. What types of things? Well, we had, uh, well, other than the COVID stuff, we had um, some food distributions, right? Now I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, some equipment. Some we equipment purchased. we purchased. Um, we did outreach programs outreach to program. some of our uh, apartment complexes. Uh, a, lot, a lot of it went towards COVID, COVID prevention, education, et cetera. And then the additional $2,090,000 will come in in 2022. I just can't put it in the budget till I have it in cash. So once I do, you'll see a resolution on a future um, meeting, um, recognizing that we got the additional $2 million and allowing me to add it into the budget for 2022 to spend as we need to. Okay. So not a lot on stormwater in 2021? Well, there was engineering that was all paid for in 2021. All the engineering studies that we had to do, the outfall study that we had to do for DEP, which was all the storm drains that we talked about. There was a lot of engineering money that was spent on this to get the ball moving on the things that we discussed. Okay. Um, there was a grant for, not a grant, there was a, there was revenue spent, I guess, um, this is section F, for um, body more cameras, 150,000 for 2021. There's nothing listed for 2022. Our, do all our police have body worn cameras now? That was a grant that we received in 2021. There's no grant in 2022 for the body cameras. So any kind of additional costs are being paid for through the police's budget. But we are going to continue to outfit everyone who paid for the police department. The grant basically covered every police officer we have. Or have existing body cameras. It's already covered. Yes. Um, Summer, Somerville Business Park, uh, Sheet 10. So we had for 2021 uh, $335,000 anticipated in revenue, and the actual was $867,000. It's like almost a $500,000 difference. And I, I see that the allocation. Sorry. <laughs> There's some timing there. You need the I mic. That, There's the sneeze mic. <laughs> um, I see that the allocation for next year is higher than this year. But I guess the question is, are there contra is there a contract amount for that? Yes, there is a contract that guarantees us a certain amount every year. We've been very fortunate in the past that they've exceeded that amount. And that difference between what we budget and what we get goes into surplus for use in future budgets. This is the maximum our contract says we'll get this year. So that is all I can budget. Um, the Open Space Trust Fund. So there was $644,000, which I believe is um, interest. Um, there was a debt payment on a loan, an open space loan that had to be paid out of the current fund. So basically what happens is we pay the money out of our current fund it's, it's an in and out. If you looked back later on in the budget under our debt payments, you'd see an identical payment being made. So it's basically transfers the money from the open space into the current fund to cover the cost of the debt. That loan is paid off in full. So therefore, there's no need to have a revenue or an appropriation in this year. Okay. Was it, maybe it was uh, somewhere else. Was there also a, an amount of interest somewhere around that 700000 um, from the open space debt fund? Uh, I'm sorry, the open space fund that went into the budget? No, this 644800 is all we took in from the open space fund to pay off their debt. There's, there's a, sh there shows that, that we did pay bond principal of six hundred and twenty thousand dollars. I don't know where the debt service is that goes with that, but we are, we are borrowing money and actively repaying it. Right? We're not really pay as you go. Anymore. We pay far more than 
you know, you get your banks, you get your statement from your credit card and it says the minimum due this year is 30, this week is $35. The township has always paid far more than the minimum payment that is due on any of our bond anticipation notes. You can only borrow bond anticipation notes for 10 years and then you have to finance them permanently. We've never had to do that. We always make sure that we pay far more than is due every year so that when we get to the tet before we get to the 10 year mark, they're paid off and the debt is gone. So that's our pay as you go debt payment plan. Well, but just to be clear, uh, there, the, the pay as you go is for essentially routine capital expenditures. Um, you know, the debt obligations are basically in two buckets. It's open space debt and it's the bond payments for road repairs, which, you know, the, the value of the road repair simply cannot be done within the framework of an existing budget. It's just, you know, we, we can't, that has to be bonded. So that was my next question. That, that money was mostly for road repairs or all for road repairs? The, the principal that we paid there? It was towards any of the bond anticipation notes that we had. Which are road repairs? But the biggest portion would definitely have been towards the money that we borrowed for the roads. Okay. I think that's all I have. I just want to mention, going back to uh, what the woman said earlier. So, um, you know, I, I understand that the uh, tax rate has gone down. But as I, as I came here last year to say, my taxes went up. In fact, they went up more this year than last year. And my assessment went up, um, what is it, $42,000? So, I mean, just keep in mind that people are looking at what they're paying in taxes more than they're looking at what's happening to the rate. And as people see taxes going up, they just want to understand why they're paying more. I mean, that's, that's how people are looking at it. I, I understand. I think the point was what the, the portion of the budget that we control is not the reason you're, you know, you're Absolutely seeing right. significant increases. That, that's kind of, you have an assessment that, you know, thankfully you're, uh, property taxes are going up rather than down. I mean, that's a, but the reality is the, uh, what I was trying to say from a budget perspective, um, you know, spending is essentially flat year over year. Okay. Thank you, Meryl. Maria Janusik. Um, are the charts uh, in that pie chart that Ms. Costa uh, presented, are they available? Did you have them here today? I did not have them here, no. But they will be online tomorrow. They're online tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, which, which makes it difficult to ask questions about them because... Well, we can uh, put it back up. Is there a question you have? It's right there. Right. What is it you want to know? Okay. Um, it's, it's difficult to see. And... Um, like what portions? What portions uh, go towards what? What? What is? What? How much is it for the the police? What no, amount of the budget sorry, is for the sorry. police? Right. The police, the public safety is about twenty four percent of the budget. Twenty four percent. So what? Twenty four percent. So what does that come out in? About eight, about eight million dollars. How much? About eight million. Eight million. Give or take. Okay. Um, now, I have a question. I think it was a comment was made that the uh, adding another shared court is saving money for Hillsborough. How is that saving money for Hillsborough? Because the things that we bring in are more than it's going to cost us to take on additional work. Okay, but So the, we don't do it for free. The, the other municipality the pays us to do it. Pay us to use our court. The revenue that you bring, that, it, that brings in. The municipality that we're taking over their court they pay us for that service. We don't do it for free. Right. But because we have essentially an established court, we only really need to, if at all, maybe one person needs to be added. But we, we make more than that simply from the fees at the court. So we're essentially consolidating courts. So every, every court now had their administrator and their judge and their prosecutor. And because we've now established that, we have a a, a group of people that can absorb a little bit more work from another municipality, but we don't have to add staff to do it. So they benefit because they, they don't have the, the same overhead for their people, and we get to make sure that the people that we do have are fully utilized in the court. 
So now you're going, you, the plan is to add uh, Branchburg as another shared, uh, another shared court. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens as far as the edit work for the for the, the personnel of the court? Are they getting paid extra, or what's happening with that? Okay. A little. They're going to get paid mm -hmm. a little, and that but that doesn't involve a lot more work. No. And if we need to add one person, we have more than enough capacity to do that. Okay, so I'm looking at sheet seven that talk, talks about anticipated revenues and anticipated for 2022, and it's showing um, Montgomery and Manville. Um, for 2022, it's showing Manville 160,000 and Montgomery 150,000. Is that what the municipalities are paying? <laughs> Yes, that's what they will pay us based on a contract that we have with them that increases every year. So Manville's paying uh, 10000 more than Montgomery? Whatever is on the paper that you see. There. Yes, yes. So Manville, a smaller municipality than Montgomery, is paying 10000 more. So mm -hmm. now, um, and in 2021, they were paying, we were paying, uh, Manville was paying 20000 more than Montgomery. Now, Branchburg is for 2022 is 55,000. What is that for half a year? Quarter, okay. quarter of a year. Quarter of a year? Yeah, it hasn't started yet. So, uh, what is so? Is there a contract already? What's the total contract amount? We're approving We're it approve tonight. tonight. And approve it. Okay. So roughly about two hundred thousand dollars. Branchburg will be, will be paying roughly two hundred thousand a year. Um, okay, now this realized in cash in 2021 uh, it's for Manville 177, 273. What does that, what does that mean? Where, because they owed us money, they didn't pay us for just for one of the months in the prior years. So if they paid us 13 months worth of fees last year, that's the cash that we took in in 2021. So the numbers on the far right are the actual cash that were paid to us. Sometimes we don't get the court money in a timely manner, so they send us December's payment in January. Okay, so but they were, they were owing uh, twenty in twenty twenty one. They were owing one hundred fifty thousand, but realized uh, one hundred seventy seven thousand. So why why is that the realized amount higher than what was owed? Because that's, that's what they pay. That's what they physically paid us in twenty twenty one. Right, but why 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 they, why they pay uh, twenty seven thousand more? I would have to look. I would have to look at the cash receipts and see why they paid us more than we were supposed to pay. But it would be because they paid us more than a full. They paid us more than a full year. But the question is why? I mean, if they, if they because they owed us. They owed us from the prior year. They owed us money from 2020. They paid it to us in 2021. They don't pay it in one lump sum. Correct. They pay us monthly. Yeah. So if they didn't pay us at the end of December and that money came in in January, we have to treat it on a cash basis, not a. Okay. All right. So you're saying that. Manville had owed owed money, and so this was this correct. Why that you're you're showing more? Uh, okay, so that appears to be uh, the same situation for Montgomery, where 2021 was supposed to be 130,000. Right. I realized 182. So right, because they paid us late money. from the prior year. Okay, so why is that allowed? I mean, where do you get the money from then to pay the personnel? If you, they're not paying on time. We don't have I don't know how to answer that question. I mean, if if it's, I don't understand what you mean, not allowed. Because if they don't pay us, we have to ask them, you didn't pay us, and then they pay us. I mean, I'm not sure what you would expect us to do. No, I'm just saying, if they didn't pay us for a certain, a certain payment, but you need that money to pay the court personnel, well, then where are you getting that extra money from until you get the payment from Montgomery or from Manville? I think we have enough in reserve our, that we could make our a overhead payroll. is the same regardless. So our, our fee we pay the judge is the same regardless. Of, and then we have, as Frank said, we have we have enough surplus in our to cover a month or so. So we, we can't run our budget cash so tight that we if we don't collect twenty thousand dollars, we can't pay people. Uh, that would be but that's fiscally coming out of the court court budget money. Their own days, their own correct. It's not but, coming but, out of any other account. It's coming out no. of the court budgets. Correct. correct. But, but we still have municipal <laughs> funds that we that we have that we have in reserve, essentially, to ensure that we have the the capability to cover in, in the event of some type of a cash hiccup. 
I mean, I, okay. I'm not sure how else to explain it. Okay. Now, I just want to be sure, be clear on it. The total budget for this year is only 150,000 over last year. Last year's budget was 32 million 897 thousand, and this year's budget is 33 million 30 thousand. So less than that, 143 or give or take. Now, uh, at one of the meetings there, it was discussed to buy the uh, Mendel property. Now, how much? What was that bought already, and is that included in here? Payments for that for that uh, to pay for that property. That money was bonded for, and is. We borrowed that money in December. December of last year. December, December of last, last year. year. So the and we borrowed it with a bond anticipation note. The first payment is not due for three years, but the money that we budgeted for bond anticipation note principal, a piece of that will go towards the Mendel payment this year. So, so we have. Here, this, is that in here? But it's not shown separately. There's a lump sum we're going to pay towards all the notes that we own. And a small piece of that would include paying something down on the Mendel property. Okay, so then that Mendel property is not shown here anywhere. It's shown no, in, in what the bond anticipation? Correct, in the bond anticipation notes section of the appropriations. Okay, and it's not separate, so we don't know what goes specifically towards the Correct. Mendel property. It doesn't show specifically in the budget document which piece is going to which loan that we have. Okay, and how much was that total for the, that bond anticipation for that Mendel property? 14, 14, 14, million. 14 million. 14 million? Mm -hmm. 14 and change, I think it was 14.3, somewhere in that range. Right. Okay, and, and what's the total bond anticipation with that and whatever else uh, um, is owed by Hillsborough? That's not a number that I have with me right now. And it's not in here? No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So where would that number be? It would be in our audit document, and I believe it would be in some of the narrative that's online in the budget document. But I can certainly provide you with a page from the most recent audit that shows you the total that we owe in bond anticipation notes and what each of the projects was for that we have it from. Okay. So okay. you would be able to, you, you will provide Absolutely. That. Absolutely. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, may I have a motion? May I have a motion? Oh, oh, yes, I think you got one more. Oh, you coming up? All right. Yes. Question on the budget? Sure. Sorry. Good evening, everyone. My name Can you is speak Christina into the microphone, Wojcik. please? Cl closer to the mic. Closer to the mic. Yes, My name is Christina Wojcik. I live in Hillsboro for 32 years on a 928 gauge drive in Hillsboro. My taxes went up $600 a quarter. And uh, for 32 years, I live in, in Hillsboro. I never, never saw anything like it. This is the first time this administration is just doing this to seniors. I am senior, and uh, I understand that budget. I understand the school budget, I, you know, all the other one. But I have a budget too, and I cannot ask anybody else for the money because nobody going to give me that money because I, I'm an Social Security. If I don't pay my taxes, my, my taxes are so high that I don't even know how I'm going to pay this quarter. You know, it costs me, you know, you know I don't have a you know, mortgage. If I have a mortgage, I would, I would probably never could live in insurance and heels follow. And for 32 years, I enjoy it. But this year, for 30, you know, paying so much for the taxes, I'm not going to be able to, even to do it. If I don't pay my taxes on time, do I have to pay interest? You know, if I don't pay them by, by tent? Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. No, I, so, be I believe that, did you file for senior, um, I forget what it's called, the, the senior freeze? The uh, senior <laughs> freeze, did you apply for that? I don't know if you qualify. I, I have it, you know, f from the state, I just have it, you know, uh, um, the Homestead re uh, re rebate. No. That's what I. That's what I have. But this, you know, this quarter right now, if I calculate it, and you know, and how, how much it cost, uh, cost a rate uh, per hundred, then you know I'm going to pay over, you know, two thousand dollars more this year what I was paying last year. So my question is, what is that rate is going to be by per hundred this year? Is it going to be same as last year, or no. is it going to be lower or higher? It's lower. How it's much? Point two nine cents per hundred. 
How much? 29 cents per hundred of assessed 29 value. 29 cents per hundred. Okay. From and 31 cents. For this budget. You for know, budget. as a seniors, I understand that a budget for the school is very, very high, 65%. As a senior, why should we pay the same tax high for school when we don't have a children and a school? I never have it. I have a two daughters. They never use the public school. I pay for my education for my children so they have a better inner life. So I pay for that. So I now, as a senior, you know, I cannot live in New Jersey. I have to leave because I got a five uh, in, on my street, five family just moved out of New, Jer New Jersey. They went to another state because they're seniors and they can afford it to pay, you know, in a school tax. School tax and then they don't have a children and we have to pay. Those people, when they have a children, they should pay more. Why somebody- It's illegal. It's, my, illi another thing it's illegal. You can't my, do it. My tax, Miss, my tax went up, I mean, uh, uh, you know, two, two months ago, I received a letter you know, from the township that the, my property, you know, went uh, 55,000, you know, higher. 55,000 higher like last year. Who made the decision and how that was assessed that my property cost $55,000 more this year like last year? You're and because my value, because my property went higher, my house, my house went down, but my property went, went up. You know, and who made that decision, you know, you know, uh, to make that, you know, the property. Nobody come and see uh, my property. Nobody knows, you know, my property never changed like this from last year. And why my property goes that high? I, you know, I understand this. Well, without getting too detailed, your assessed value goes up based on comparable homes sold in your neighborhood. So your neighbors sell their house for X dollars and you have a similar house and property and that essentially what sets the market. The, the fact that the Hillsborough, Central New Jersey, was a desirable place to move during COVID. People were moving out of the cities and paying 50, 60, 75, $100,000 over list. Good, good for the people selling and the people moving in. So the average medium income in the, of a house in the state of New Jersey now is 543,000. Did you hear that? Yes, so, yes, I, so I, I, what, I'm what, watching this, yes. So, so on, as, as, as Frank said, Community Delcor, unfortunately, that's the, the delt is how it, we based on assessed value and taxes. That's how the state of New Jersey I operates, that, right? I understand that, but, and, but how are we going to pay? How does somebody could make a decision to on my property $55,000 almost more like last year? So, Nobody I think I think I, I think I answered I'm that question. I buy property not even worth it a half of that, sir. It's based a half. What I'm paying yeah, right so, now. So part of what the process that we go through is there's a there's a regular uh, uh, assessment process that we undertake that's based upon uh, a whole number of factors. But you know the reality is a lot of it is based upon comparable sales in the area and what we know from our. Uh, uh, you know, from the data that we have on, on other properties, essentially what those, uh, each house should be, should be worth. So is it exact? Of course not. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of an estimate, but we know based upon what others come in at. Um, so I would, I would venture to say that, um, the team that comes out and does that assessment, um, they know what they're doing and they, they, they base it on that. Now I know you don't want to hear that. And I know from the standpoint of just living here, that doesn't help you. Um, but the reality is across the state, and in particular, uh, what we've seen in, in uh, Hillsborough, property values have increased significantly in the last 18 months. If you're not selling your house, it doesn't do you a whole heck of a lot good. I understand that. And I'm, you know, we're all in the same, same boat. boat. And, you know, I, 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 you know, I look at my, uh, my assessed value and I think, wow, if, if I was, if my kids were out of college and, you know, I, I was ready to retire, it might, might be good, but I, I, I'm not leaving anytime soon. So I understand your, your concern, but the, the, the assessment process is, is, a pretty, is a pretty robust one, and the people that we have doing it um, are really good at what they do. You know, sir, right now I'm speaking for myself, but I'm sure there was a lot of seniors, you know, gone because I went to that office last week. There was a line outside to the assessor's office. 
There was a line over there with seniors coming and wheelchairs. They cannot pay the taxes because the taxes were so high this quarter. You know, this quarter it went, went so high, $600 plus what you were paying before. This is insane. I never, I never, I'm 32 years in Hillsboro. And I love, believe me, I love to live in Hillsboro. I love it. You know, and I, but right now, you know, you know, what the township does, chasing all the seniors out of the homes where they work so hard all their life, you know, and they have to move someplace else because they can't afford to pay taxes. You know, it's not only tax. But how are you going to live? How are you going to pay health insurance? You probably don't want to hear that. I but know, we as I know. Seniors, we understand. We, we as understand. A seniors, I believe you know what? We, we just got a raise. We got a raise in January. You know what? They took it back on Medicare. So whatever they did was they took it back. Yeah. So, so what are we supposed to do? So what are we supposed to do? I will be the first one that will go down to Trenton with you. And we can go go march down there and, and tell them that the, the, the legislators down there have to figure out a better tax process for because for the you state know what of New my house I don't do anything to my house because I only do what I have to do, you know, to just repair it. You know, and then my, my property goes at fifty five thousand dollars. What I on a, on a spring in on a, on a spring I have a you know a river in my backyard. Because I have an open space and you know in the back, the open space is higher, my property is lower, so my whole property is flooded. And see, and they raise my you know a uh, lot uh, you know, the lawn taxes, you know, free, uh, you know, the value fifty five thousand. So I don't understand this why who made this kind of decision? Why nobody saw my house, nobody see it, nobody talked to me. You know, I mean, we as a seniors, we're very, very frustrated. I speak to you know, a lot of people, but nobody want to come over here because nobody want to speak to I'm the only one looks like was over here. But I was here last week at a assessor's office. There was a line outside. The okay. you know, seniors is coming. Because we as a senior, you know, yes, I understand that, you know, you know that everybody's got a budget. We have a budget too. How are we going to pay $600 more plus what you were paying before, you know, you know for the taxes? I, I, that, I can't even explain. You know, I, I, am, I am very, very sorry, but I just, you know, I am very frustrated right now. And, and, and a lot of people frustrated. All my neighbors frustrated because they were so high. And how about, you know, what, because we want to, you know, how about in the next quarter? Next quarter is going to be the same thing? No. No. No? No. That's what we tried to explain to you, but you didn't want to listen. <laughs> okay? No, I tried, I tried, I tried to, to but We tried to show you the math. So, I'm very nervous. So. It's okay. so I, I think when you went to the tax assessor's office, I think they tried to explain to you, but you were very emotional and you didn't really want to listen like you are now. Okay. So I know that they are more than willing to try and explain it to you. And we tried to do the math on the screen. Okay. So, so if you take your assessed value of your house, whatever you got from the tax assessor, let's say it's a hundred thousand dollars times it by time, yeah. multiply it times 0.29 and that should give you i understand that sir i understand that but you know what i you know that I, if i went last week they told me in the office that the next quarter no, is going to be probably the same excuse me i i, I can't answer all these questions out because i don't know your house i don't know the, the assessed value of it i don't know any of that all I can tell you is that I don't hear what you're saying. I said I can't answer all those questions because we don't know your property, okay? But it's the same for everybody in the town. But they're always willing to un to try and explain it to you the best they can. Unfortunately, I, you know, the as Mr. Delcor said, everybody's house went up in value. Mine did. Mr. Britton's did. Theirs did, and taxes went up. At some point, you know it. It, it becomes a business decision, I understand. And what we control, we can't. And what we, can, and what we can control from a municipal standpoint, we kept as flat as we could. So if you took everybody else's tax out of it, the tax from Hillsborough would have been almost nothing as an increase. And, the tax that Hillsborough said is the highest one. Well, no, you're country. adding all the other taxes. No, and we control. Miss, you're adding all the taxes that are being collected on behalf of the county and the school and the fire. I'm talking just the portion that Hillsborough Township receives to run the township. That's basically 
almost exactly the same as last year. It was 150,000 total revenue increase for everybody. 40,000. But all those years I was here, I never saw at a quarter. We didn't have COVID and we didn't have a, a, a boom in, in Hillsborough with a 10 or 15% housing market increase yes. like we did during COVID. The market drives the, the, the industry, ma'am. Everyone was moving to here. I, you know, there's a lot of people that cashed out and split down to wherever because they could, right? And people were coming in from New York City that were paying 3,500 a month for apartments and coming down here and buying a house 100,000 over over risk because they could afford it. And that's what drives it. Unfortunately, that's that's what this. The, I, I understand all this. So I can't fix that. I can't go. I have no control over that. There's nothing in, that we have here but as a mechanism to control. The administration could control it, how they could raise. I understand that how the value was go up. But I understand, but who made the decision to bring my, prop, uh, my property, you know, Ma'am, it's based, as Mr. Delcour said, it's based on the value of your property and the assessed value of your property. You know, based on comparable homes that were sold in your neighborhood. That's it. It's so not. It's not seniors. We should not pay. We should not pay the same amount what everybody else is paying. Um, because we are, you know, we, you know, I don't have children in school. Why should I pay we, for, for somebody else's children? We can't. School? That's illegal. We, we we can't make an adjustment. That's there. illegal. As much as as much as we sympathize with your with your situation, we we don't have the we don't have the legal authority to do that. And quite honestly. We don't. We don't. Except for me. So I mean, except for Bob. Yep, there are for all of us sitting here. I understand. I mean, so I mean, you feel that there's a there's a process that has to be in place to be consistent. And I understand what we that. Get to. So I understand that. Yeah, I understand it. Everything. It hurts. It hurts us all. Because I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, t I tell you the truth, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I understand because I, you know, I see what's going on. I'm watching television. I see, you know, what happened. But after I saw my, you know, tax bill for this quarter, I almost got a heart attack. I tell you the truth, I almost have a heart attack because this is, was never been like this. You know, all at once and so much. If you put it like in the three or four quarters, then I understand it's much easy. But if you go, you go so much and one quarter so, so high. How does seniors supposed to pay for this? How? Okay. You know, I'm 83 years old. My husband is 85 years old. You know, I said, how are we gonna, how are we gonna, how are we gonna live in this? I don't know. You know, if I pay taxes, that mean you know I don't have a pay. I, I can't pay for my health insurance. You know, I can't have medication because you know I have to pay for my my taxes. And if I don't pay my taxes, they're gonna you know take my home away. So you know how frustrated we are as the seniors. So I just okay. wanted to everybody understand that, that, you know, I'm just, you know, I understand the budget and I understand everything, but you know, it's, I don't understand who made the decision to, you know, raise my property so much when my property is under the water in a spring because of the open space in the back, because I have a problem with my, my open space in the back. You nobody asked me that that question and raising that much and because my I, you know, my land went up, that's okay. why my property we, we need to move on, but I'll tell you you have the right to do an appeal to the county. So if if you feel that you're unjust, because we need to move on and we I think we've gone around and around and around here, you can go and file an appeal to the county and then you'll have a second person will look at the value and see if it changes. So you always have that right. So if you feel that it's unjust you have that right. But I think we need to move on. We, I appreciate what you're saying. We are all uh, um, empathetic to your situation and everyone in this town and seniors invited, but there are certain things that we can do and we can control and that's all. I'm, sh I'm sure I'm okay. not the only one senior. I, you know, you know, because you know, I'm not disagreeing with the you. Same shoes, you, know, you the same, they all, they all have the same, the same right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And yeah, you know, eventually all, all of you is going to be in the uh, same situation. I know. You know, so it's it's hard. Okay. So you know, if somebody made the decision to bring your property fifty five thousand more, like last year, you know, you know, there has to be a reason for so that. Why? Nobody that. came. Nobody checked. Totally nobody. Done. Nobody said anything. Uh, yeah. We wait, just wanted to okay. it up. Uh, uh, yes, okay. I could appeal. It okay. said in the letter that I could appeal. Right. You know, but I just waiting. How much is going to be per hundred? So I said sometimes uh, the value goes up, but you know the you know the per hundred goes down. So maybe I'm not going to pay that much. But you know, 
I, I this this year, I you know, I don't know what's going on. Okay, thank you. You know what I mean? All right. That, that's what happened. All right. I am sorry, sir. You know, I'm just I'm, because I don't you know I don't hear you that well. You know what okay. you guys were saying. Okay. You know, but I just only know what happened. You know, to me okay. and you know all my neighbors too. You know, and, and like I said, five neighbors I lost it this year because they were nice neighbors. They can't afford to live in New Jersey, especially in Hillsboro. And I love Hillsboro. I love to be here because I'm here for 32 years. Me and too. I love it. Yep. And I, I, I want to live. And my children is here and I want to be here. You know, and you know, but some, you know, somebody has to just look around and, you know, you guys could, you know, look into it and see, you know, what we, you know, what it could do for, for the seniors. We are, our hands are tied is what we can do. The only thing that you're allowed to do is apply it for a senior freeze. But I, I really okay. appreciate that you listen. I right. appreciate it very Thank much. You. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Maria Janusik. Um, the lady has a very valid question. Why did the value of her land go up that much? Now, uh, we have the tax assessor here who maybe could explain this annual reassessment program because I had asked once before, when was this, when was this approved? Who approved it? When did the governing body approve it? Did Trenton approve this annual reassessment program? And when did it start? Because I would go to the, to the uh, meetings at the tax board and I was asking these questions. When, when did the annual reassessment program start in Somerset County? When did it start in Hillsborough? Who approved it? Initially, it was supposed to be over would five you like, and four would you years, like me to have then it went to five years. Answer? So maybe the tax assessor could explain to us I, how I all this is done. I will ask because that's, to because yeah, that so, money okay. is in the budget. That money, that, that tax okay. money is in the budget, and we need to know how all of this is worked out all right. and yes. how, how our properties are assessed. So, uh, and, and, I, I and can't tell you. There should that. be an answer for the taxpayers. Yeah. So the the the. I don't know exactly when it started, but the underlying rationale is that essentially by having a continuously uh, current program, we don't ever run into a situation where after, if you haven't been reassessed for three or four years, now all of a sudden your your property has jumped by seventy-five or eighty thousand dollars in one shot because because it wasn't assessed for a number of years. So we worked the process to make sure that each person's, each property is maintained at a relatively current level so that we're, it's, 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 you're being taxed on what the most recent comparable would be uh, against that, against that property. And in some cases, those properties go down. It's not saying always is ups, but it's, it's based upon current data. And if you don't find that acceptable, you're, you're entitled to that, but we're not going to change the policy. I didn't say anything about the underlying idea of this whole thing. I'm asking when, when was this I, I don't know. implemented? It's been a long time. Call? You are, you, you have been a committee member it's, for many, it's many been years. been a long time. This all, this all started, uh, I think I got a letter once saying we're continuing no. the program. So continuing, when did it even start? Yes, we, never gotten, we never got that information as property owners. What I saw that this reassessment program, there was a pilot program in Monmouth County. We, Somerset County didn't have a program. All of a sudden, we're part of a reassessment program where you're assessing, what is it, a, a percentage of, of the, 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 the whole township and basing uh, uh, property values on partly on, on, on those assessments. Now you have two field representatives who how, how are they All doing right. the work of Ms. assessing? Janice, how are they doing you, the work you, of assessing uh, these can properties? Can you have a seat, please? I'll have, I'll have Deb Blaney come up and try and answer okay. that question, okay? Who's that up? Ms. Blaney. Ms. Thank Blaney you. will be up. Okay. Mr. Penny, just a point of information if you follow our rules real quick. Okay. Um, the current inflation rate in New Jersey right now is 6.8%, last year at 1.2%. Okay, thank you. Oh. Ms. Blaney, would you, can you come up here? There are my don't go now. Yeah, she got a seat. Okay, you got a seat right here. We got, we got mics. We got yours. Okay, so. Hi. This is on. Yeah. 
So I just got to get a little close. Okay. Um, so, Ms. Janusek, you ask a couple times every year when this started, and I will refresh your memory from maybe two months ago. This program started in 2014. Excuse me. This, this started in 2014. Um, we keep the, the benefit of the reassessment program is to allow the township to adjust the values depending on what the market is showing. Mr. Jasak, please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Sit down or have you removed. Let her answer the question. Right. The answer I think was already given with the first words out of her mouth, but she said 2014. Yes. Okay. So that was the win. That was the win. Uh, the, cat, the, cat, the county, the state, the county, and the division of taxation approved it. Yes, they did. Thank you. So every year, every year I file an application, and it is approved at the Somerset County Tax Board level. Then it goes to Trenton, and they sign off on it. So every year we go through the process of filling out the application, and we have to have we have to have certain requirements every year, which is we have to inspect. 20% of the town on an annual basis, and we also have to attempt to do an exterior on um, those 20%, but if we don't, we leave a note, and then we go back if they call. If we don't get into the house, then we estimate at the highest potential. Um, we don't have to have somebody go out to a property in order to assess the property. I know the one um, woman from 928 Case Drive, nobody has to come out. It's my job to research the sales because the sales dictate what the market is. So yes, you're, you're attempted an inspection once every five years, but just because you don't have an inspection doesn't mean your assessment cannot change. It depends on what the market is showing. So what I do is I research the sales and researching the sales and make sure that they're usable sales, that dictates what the values are in each development. And honestly, when, when you look at the market, and I, you know, Frank brought it up, and, and I think uh, the mayor did, the, the market has, has been uprising for, for years, um, you know, through COVID. And honestly, we're not even at 100%. So when you look at the value and you come in and you look at the sales binder that is open public knowledge, I had one person file an appeal for residential property. So 13,000 residents, one person filed an appeal on their assessment. Because remember, you can't file an appeal based on what your tax dollars are. I had one person. And the reasoning they filed that appeal was the damage that they suffered from Ida. No other resident filed an appeal based on value. You know why? Because they came in, they looked at the sale binder, and they said, thank you for the information. Yes, we're still not happy, but we understand the way that the market is up on the upswing. So I don't know what else. So the answer to your question was 2014 it started. It was approved by the county. It was approved by the county. Ms. Janicek? Please come to the microphone. Please come to the microphone. No, please. No, no. Okay. Okay. You cannot speak from there. No one can hear you. Will you please? All right. This is not a free for all. If you want to follow the rules, come up to. You need to come up to the mic as you normally would. But okay, we'll move on. Anyone else have any comments for Ms. Blaney? I'm sorry. I said, is anybody else? Wait, wait. Come to the mic first, okay. so they can hear you okay. all the way. Okay. okay. As a senior, can you, uh, the administration could tell me where I could go and appeal? Because like what she said, I don't appeal because I thought that, you know, the value went up, but I said that per hundred is going to go down. So that's what I said, but I was you... waiting for the bill to come. So I don't appeal. But as a senior, do I have as anything else I could go to and where I could go? You know, except to the, you know, the one rebate where we got it from the state. There's only one that Homestead rebate. That anything else I could go, go for and apply for it you know, as a senior? You know, well, well, let me start by saying again that you, you cannot file an appeal based on the, do the dollar amount of your taxes. If you file an appeal just saying my taxes are too high, they will throw it out. So when you get your assessment card in the mail, usually sometime during um, 
the month of February or beginning of March. Look at that value. If you feel that that value is not an accurate reflection of the market value, then that's your time to file. Okay, where, I, ha where I have to go, you know, to, to appeal? Where I, where I have to apply? You, you would apply at the Somerset County Tax Board. And that time frame is when you get the postcard in the mail mm -hmm. until May 1st. That's your time frame. Right. But you have to have at least three to five comparable sales that are showing that the sales are actually less than what you're assessed at. And that's not going to happen. In this time frame, that's not going to happen. I, I guarantee you. Well, if I you can find it, <laughs> that's your opportunity. Actually, what what happened in our next, so many years I'm here in, in the Hillsboro, the taxes, you know, net that But value stop, but don't don't bring out. up the taxes. Again, you cannot file an appeal based on your tax dollars. They will dismiss it. You have to go in there appealing the assessed value. They don't want to hear about your tax dollars because they will shut you down. If the house is gonna go down. The Somerset you know, County so Tax Board so Commissioners will, will put an end to your appeal. I'm sorry? If that, if that house is going to go down, because it's, if, it's not getting already right now. You know, we have not seen that. We get deeds in every week in my office. We are still seeing deed prices coming in anywhere from 50000 to 150000 even on the 2022 tax assessments. So in February, the answer is between February and May. Is that what you said? May 1st. May 1st. Mm -hmm. You have the ability to go to the county and file a tax appeal, or not a tax appeal, an assessment appeal. Mm -hmm. But the burden of proof sounds like it's on you to bring the cops Absolutely. that show that your house is not of that value. So you understand what I'm saying? So if you start collecting comps or looking at homes sold in your area, if you feel they're starting to sell for significantly less than what you have, that's what you have to prove. But you have to wait till February, okay? Okay, I understand yeah. that. But like I said, you know, my taxes never, never went down. It's always go a little up. Wait. You know, since Can't I talk from, about taxes 30, today. Thirty-two years ago. Wait a minute. Thirty-two years ago, you know, I paid for my for how much I paid for my house that went five times higher. I when I paid thirty-two years ago went five times higher. Well, okay. well, I have not to use the tax dollars. Your house is if I was cheaper. working, I understand. But as a senior, you know, mm -hmm. and you just got charging, I mean, you know, you, you know, are you guys, you know, chasing the seniors out of the, you know, out of the house? I would recommend so, that you file, a, you file the application for a property sell my freeze. House and, you know, and take the value. Okay. I have, you know, I'm getting older. My children is here, so I need okay. them. Yeah. So we we all understand to, that. Yeah, I don't but have you to. have you applied for the property freeze through the state? Excuse me? The property freeze, did you apply through the state for that no, program? No, I don't apply for this one. No, no, no. Okay, well, if you contact our office or you look online, we can give you the phone number. I appreciate And you that. have to fill out an application that, with yes. them. That was any, because there I didn't give me that. Yeah, that was any, yes, there are income like requirements. Yeah. I, I like to come to the office. You know, okay. if you guys could help okay. me with that. We can give you a phone. We can't give you the forms. It's a state program, but we can give you the phone number, and it's an okay. 800 okay. number. That's fine. Okay. okay. All right. It. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. In regard to the value of the house, when we get those cards that show the assessed value, we have a value for the improvement and we have a value mm -hmm. for the land. Mm -hmm. How do you determine the value of the land? You have to look at the overall value. You cannot just file an appeal based on value I'm not looking for, for the appeal. land or the improvement. You have to look at the total. It doesn't. I'm as far looking, as the I'm county not, tax I'm board not for an appeal not no an appeal. but i'm just I'm saying you have to look at the total value i can change either the land or the improvement whatever how whatever you, i feel necessary how do you determine the value of the land you're but you're valuing the, the improvement mm -hmm. you're valuing the land how do you determine the value of the land because i think she was saying that i have different, for, I have different formulas i have different formulas and i can decide whether or not i'm going to change the land or the improvement it's up but, to me but, i'm certified yeah. But but that just but, to but just to, in a nutshell though I mean mm -hmm. but there are also land comparables and there are also mm -hmm. uh, valuations that are looked at from from uh, both the land and the and the structure perspective. But, but so, that's what I'm but, asking but, is how but, like from but, my but, property but, but, how do we value the land? Th there because are, when I get the card, we let me answer your card, question. I'm trying to help you here. But you're telling you're, me. I, I, I'm not talking about vacant land or, or a piece of, I'm asking when I get this card and it says 
This is the improvement value. This is the land value. How did you determine the land value? That's all I want to know. And my point is, she's a licensed professional, okay. and, and we, we can't explain to you every procedure that's done to determine all the formulas that go into it. But essentially, it's based upon comparable values at its most basic level. There are other things that go into it, but that's basically what it is. Comparable value of land of what? Well, there are land sales. Land sales. It's it's a it's a more detailed than you would you would imagine. There's percentages of, of how much land to improvement in different areas. There's different formulas. It. I've been in this for thirty years. I. I'm certified. I teach the courses. It, I can't just explain in, you know, even an hour how I do my job. See, but that's very difficult for a property owner when you get a, a thing. All you have to be oh, concerned with is what the total value is. Please, as a matter of practicality, for okay. anybody who is maybe listening at home, how the tax appeal process works and how the assessment process works is. It doesn't matter what the breakdown is of the land mm -hmm. and, and the house. As a matter of fact, if you go to the county board or a tax court and you start arguing, well, I just want to appeal the land portion. I think she got my land portion right. Correct. They'll throw you right out. What you have to look at is when you get that assessment card in February, look at it. Look at it and say, okay, I'm being assessed for this amount. Then look at the houses that are selling in your neighborhood. If the houses in all your neighborhood that are like yours are selling for less than that, then I strongly suggest you contact the assessor and you file an appeal okay. before May 1. If, if you look and the sales all support it or are higher, then I would suggest that you say nothing. But that, 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 that's just the best legal advice I can give you. If you look at it and all the sales are higher, say nothing. If all the sales are lower, file an appeal by May 1 with the county board. Okay, you're giving you. me answers to things I didn't ask. I'm not looking to do an appeal. So, I'm not looking okay. to do an appeal. I understand then, the process. Then I understand you, the You're process asking a question that has no, no meaning What I had asked was, when I've got two different values on there, and I have a land value, I asked how that land value is determined. And I'm, I'm hearing where I'm, a, I'm an expert, and I've done this for 70 years or whatever, mm -hmm. but I still don't hear how is that the land bottom line, value? Ms. Janicek, she said it's a formula that you can't see. She has it in her computers. It pulls into different projects. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line, the answer is your aggregate number is the one that counts. No, Don't, the aggregate number, the land and the house together, oh, okay. is the but number that matters. Two separate numbers. It doesn't I matter. No. It so doesn't someone matter. like this lady says she's got uh, uh, open space okay. and her land gets flooded. What, what is? How, how are you determining her her? The, uh, the value of her land okay. versus someone who doesn't have a flooding issue or whatever. Okay. So my so my my uh, uh, land is is unique, mm -hmm. and so how do you determine the value of my land? And that's what I'm asking. You've got two and separate numbers, the, the improvement and the land. How are you determining that land number? That's what I'm asking. And, 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 and I tried to answer it for you. Not about appeals. Not go. about comparables. I understand all that. But stuff. but it is about. See, here's where we always get into this issue. You ask a question and you get an answer and you don't want to accept it. So you don't. You say that we didn't answer it, but you don't want to accept it. At its most basic fundamental level, the assessments are based upon comparable values. There are there are land values throughout the town. We know what land is valued at because land gets sold bought, bought, sold all the time. So there are. She has been doing this for thirty years. She is licensed, understands what she's doing. If you're asking us to explain it to you uh, uh, for the specifics of this one in this form, we, we can't, and frankly, we're not going to, because this is not the purpose of where we're here today. If you want to understand the value of your home, you can go in and speak to the tax assessor. But we're not doing that here today, because that's not the purpose of what we're, we're here to do. Okay, I understand that, but I'm okay. just saying you're, we're, we, are, we are taxed based on the value of our property. When I get that card, you're giving me two different values, the improvement and the land. And so that's what I you why know, I, I, I don't get a vote and they can throw me out of the meeting. She's answering you about eight times. It's a formula that is done on the computer that okay. she's doing as a professional. I am saying, 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 I didn't catch your name, you absolutely do. You absolutely do. Your question's been answered multiple times.
Good night. All right. We'll make a motion to uh, move on. Yeah. Thank you. I have one question. No, I'm sorry. We've no, no, we're, we're, we've we've gone. We beat this horse, ma'am. We're done. We're done. No. Nope. You can talk to her after. You, you can talk to her after the meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, may I have motion? We have a motion. And a second. A second. Roll we call, please. Roll call. Roll call, please. Mayman Britton. Yes. Mayman Delcor. Yes. Is that Mayor Erickson? <laughs> yes. Mayor Lafon. Yes. All right, our consent agenda. We still have that to do. We have consent four through, thank you, Debbie. Four through 14. May I have a motion to uh, approve consent agenda four through 14? Second. Second. Any comments from the dais? Any comments from the floor on consent agenda four through 14? Maria Janicek. Consent number eight, resolution authorizing the disposal of street sweepings at the Orton Road facility by Deer Carcass Removal Services. Um, so the Deer uh, so you have a cost not to exceed twenty thousand dollars for this this service. Yeah. Uh, what is the cost per per Deer Carcass? This is not for the removal of Deer Carcass. That just happens to be the name of the company. It's actually for the removal of debris. And I agree with you. It, it, it is very confusing, but the name of the company has to is just happens to be Deer Carcass Removal, right. and they're cleaning up debris. Yeah, yeah. So I agree. It's it's pretty confusing, but we didn't name the company. Right. Okay. All right. So. Yeah. So they're not removing deer; they're removing street sweepings. So. Right. It's a lump sum. Okay. Very very strange. Yes, it is. It yeah, no, it made you think about it. I agree because I looked at that many times, and I like, where are all these deer? <laughs> They're actually being removed by them, too. <laughs> consent number Consent number 11, the resolution uh, authorizing the transfer, uh, transfer of earned amounts uh, from the subdivision and site plan engineering trust accounts to the treasurer's account. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm seeing the last item is Sherman track. It's always, why is it always spelled the wrong way? It's either Sherman uh track or in this case it's a track with a t it's the track. why is right. that always why I, is it always 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 wrong i'm asking to be friends. i don't we're, i don't know we'll have to talk to the engineering part make sure they take a change the what we'll have to talk to the engineering part make sure they make the change again same place though Resolution authorizing cancellation of outstanding checks. Um, so the current account it says the attached list totaling 104,148.05. So we have check amounts and check numbers. And uh, there's on page 44 of 73, there's a check 63036 for $76,127. To whom was that check written? I don't know off the top of my head. Because, because that's a that's a big amount for someone mm -hmm. for someone to just not uh, to ignore that Correct. kind of a check. Correct. And a little large check has been notified multiple times and not responded to us. The checks are no good now anyway. No, so it's so because they're more than six months old. So, so the bank would not cash them anyway. We've tried to contact anyone with a large check and they've non responded. So if at some point in time they come back we could honor it, but right now we're just voiding the check because we can't keep it on the books any longer. These some of these checks are, are a year and a half or two years old. And you have a, you you have the list that shows who this check was made. Yes, ma'am. Okay, because that's yeah, that's a huge amount. Yes, it is. For someone to forget about it. They're so, bad. So good for us. What? That's that's good for us. <laughs> but what happens? So now, if they if they discover that it got lost or whatever, and they we will reissue. We're, the we're, fact, they can come Let's back. Let's not make any commitments here. Right. 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 We'll look into it. We'll evaluate the circumstances as they may arise. That's right. Yes. <laughs> what else? So they could come back if the check is now can't considered canceled and invalid. If they were to come back and say, hey, I never got this check. I didn't answer your letters. We could we could pay them. We would 100% under, under pay them if it was a valid uh, item. Absolutely. This doesn't cancel the debt necessarily. It just cancels very old checks. That, that's from the uh, that's from the current account. Yes, ma'am. All right. 
So now, so now, what happens with that amount? Because initially, that was deducted from the from the uh, current account, right? Correct. It shows us an outstanding check on my list. So now the outstanding checklist will be reduced and will show more actual money in the bank. So that seventy six thousand now will be will increase the, the current account. Correct. Yes. Oh, I think it was consent. Sorry. Okay, the uh, consent number 14 resolution authorizing a shared services agreement for shared municipal court between the township of Hillsboro and Branchburg. Um, so what is the what is the uh, contract amount that, that they're going to be paying annually? We you asked that question before. It was fifty five thousand for the first quarter, and then a little over two hundred thousand for the next year, and then a, I think it's two percent on top of that per year. You asked that for part of the question okay. in the beginning. Okay. Um, and you had the number because you normally wouldn't you normally put that in the resolution how much they're paying initially? Um, no. no. No, it's a contract. It's a, a five-year contract. The amount changes every single year. Just approving the agreement. Normally, we put an expenditure in a resolution, but not necessarily a revenue. Uh, okay, so, wait a this, so this is this is for one year only, and then it's going to be. Um, no. Then it can be renewed. What I mean, what is this? How long is this? It's for? a five-year agreement, but the the first payment is only for first quarter because it's not starting till. September or so. I guess I didn't read the whole thing. Does it say in here five years? It's a five-year agreement? Five-year agreement. It says it in here? It's five-year agreement. Does it say in here? I, I in the agreement, it. yeah, sure. It says it right there. In the, in the resolution. Agreement. Does it say in the resolution well, it's a five-year agreement? Let me see. I, I don't know if it does or it doesn't, but because it, I think it doesn't other, need to. I think the other agreements, I think like Manville is three years, so this is a five-year? It's a five-year. It's a five year. <laughs> it is a five year. How does it say it in the resolution? No, but it doesn't need to. It says you're approving the agreement. You asked me what it was. I thought it's a five year. Okay. You want a copy of it? Here, here. Those things are in the resolution. It's in the contract, which is attached. It's in the contract. Okay. So sometimes you have it in the resolution, sometimes you don't. Okay. Um, all right. So Article then, three, so section A has so all of the contract, and you have a copy of what the the, the payments are going to be for the five years. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. It's in section A. Anyone else? Okay. We have a we have a motion. We have a second. Yeah. Roll call, please. Stephen Brinning. Yes. Regina Beltworth. Yes. Yes. Mayor yes. Yes. Claims list 2022-12. May a motion to approve claims list 2022-12. Thank you. Second? Second. All righty. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from the dais? Seeing none. Roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Mayor Erickson? Yes. Mayor Lamonti? Yes. That concludes our regular meeting. May I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night. We are adjourned 1028.